carry a special feeling when you know them can't press it I'm hard. Yeah, man. We know poverty tricking up here, goal. Yeah, we got it, girl, or. Yeah, man. I could have ooh them around, could have ooh them really, I try. Ooh them, I try. Any man want violate, guaranteed my rag of fly. All right. New standard, new brand. Change them too bad, too bad. We are all with Christ, Christ. We are all with God. Mm -hmm. Father, make me glad they smile. Love's blessing in my heart, yeah. Best time in my life. Best me ever had. Mm -hmm. Thy kingdom come, it come. Thy will be done, thing done. Big smile on my face. Ready for fun turn down. Don't stop. Thy kingdom come, it come. Thy kingdom come. All right. Thy kingdom come, it come. Thy will be done. Me know the father and I forget me, cause me know me get eternal life, live forever. Every day we feel the pressure, poor people in the pressure, and my enemies is on the rise. What the hell we would I do without the promise and the mercy from the most high to the Israelites? Me no know, please the word that God beside you, send your son to die for me, I give thanks for a new life. New life, man I got road with a thousand wives, thousand wives, live forever, me have eternal life, forever life. One king, Mr. Dr. Christ, pagan blood, I go run like my life. My gosh. All when them try apologize, ten fold never get back. We not go my compromise. Gosh. My people are old. Eden bow down, boy, better recognize. Thy kingdom come, it come. Thy will be done, thing done. Big smile on my face. Ready for the fun can stop. Thy kingdom come, it come. Thy kingdom come. All right. Thy kingdom come, it come. Thy will be Look. done. Dear Heavenly right. Father. The father of guys, ruler of the 12 tribes, you gave the wicked eyes, yet they still blind, they never get refined, cause they live in the facade, I repented of the lies, got the water of the word, and I swallow my pride, the wicked come with commotion, devouring lies, with your wisdom of ocean that's turning the tide, where you gonna hide, when the Lord is revealed from the sky, when he come down to take up his bride, and wipe the tears from Jerusalem's cry, The kingdom in this world cannot coincide. The dead who be in Christ, the first one to ride. You live in the lot and you live in the God. When the kingdom come, you gon' fry. My gosh. Thy kingdom come, it come. Thy will be done, thing done. Big smile on my face. Ready for the turn down. Don't stop. Thy kingdom come, it come. Thy kingdom come. All right. Thy kingdom come, it come. Thy will be done.
Israel, let us rise and face Jerusalem. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. The book of Sirach, chapter 36, verse 1. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, God of all, and behold us, and send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations. Let them see thy power, as thou wast sanctified in us before them, so be thou Magnify among them before us, and let them know thee, as we have known thee, that there is no God but only thou, O God. Show new signs, and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm, that they may set forth thy wondrous works. Raise up indignation, and pour out wrath. Take away the adversary, and, de and destroy the enemy. Make the time short. Remember the covenant, and let them declare thy wonderful works. Let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of the fire, and let them perish that oppress the people. Smite and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say, There is none other but we. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together, and inherit thou them as from the beginning. O Lord, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name, and upon Israel, whom thou hast named thy firstborn. God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father, we thank you for this Sabbath day. We thank you again, Father God, for giving us a chance in a time as such as this, Lord God, to give us a space of repentance. Father, we thank you again for the seventh day that you blessed it, Lord God, and you, O oh God, have made it a day for us, your children Israel, Father. Father, you sanctified it as well as blessed it, Father. And we thank you for that, Lord God, as we come together on this Sabbath day, Lord God. For it is a sign between you and we, your people, the children of Israel, Father. And we thank you, Lord God, for this space of repentance to bring us back to our custom and to our heritage, Father. And we thank you. We give you all the honor and glory, Father. Father, we pray that you continue to lead and guide us and protect us, Father. We pray, Father God, for all that are sick, Throughout the land, Father God, your people, Lord God, we pray, Father God, that you would touch and heal their bodies. We also pray, Father God, that you would bless the womb of the mothers, Lord God, to bring forth your mighty nation, the children of Israel. We pray, Father God, that you have mercy on us, Father God. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive the sins of our forefathers, Lord God. And please, Lord God, lead us and guide us by your spirit. For it's not by might, but not by power, but by thy spirit, said the Lord. And, Father, we thank you for your son our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And we pray again, Father God, that you continue, Lord God, to bless our bishops. We pray, Lord God, you strengthen them as they continue, Lord God, to enlighten your people, Father God, as you enlighten them through the spirit in, uh, of Christ, Father. Father, we pray, Lord God, for the deacons, Lord God, that hold up the hands of the bishops, Lord God. We pray that you will strengthen them likewise, Father God, as they lead and guide your people in spirit and in truth, Father. We pray for the captains, Lord God. We pray for the officers, we pray for the soldiers and the brothers, Father God. We pray for those, Lord God, that has not yet woken up and come into repentance, Father. We pray that you will send your spirit out, Lord God, and draw them to this truth, Father. We pray that you continue to protect us, Lord God, in the hedges and highways as we travel, Lord God, as we go out, Lord God, to compel our people. Okay, Father, we, again, we thank you, Lord God. We pray that you will bless the mothers. We pray that you will bless the daughters, the sisters, Lord God, and continue to strengthen them, Lord God, as we continue this walk in this war against the souls of our people, Father. Father, we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Let everybody say hallelujah. 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 And pray, Lord God, that you will bless the food, the strong drink, Lord God, in Jesus Christ's name. Let everybody say amen. Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints. Sons of God, hand salute. Salute down. Face sisters. To the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Uh, 
I done lost the bar on this mic already. All praise to the Most High. Uh, shalom, brothers and sisters here in Gastonia. Uh, first, I want to uh, say shalom to you and all praises to the Most High that you've made it. Also want to say shalom to our brothers and sisters that's following online. Uh, we, we pray that the Lord continue to keep you in good health. And those of us that are ill or, or, or sick or have certain trials and troubles, we pray that the Lord lift those burdens from you and to uh, keep you in this truth, okay? Um, we're going to go right into it. I got a lot of information here. Uh, but I want to first go into something that I was listening to Deacon Yahshua. Uh, Deacon Yahshua's class, I don't even remember the title of it, but, but, but he brought out about, what was the title of his class? Anybody remember? What was the title of the class? Because I remember something that was in the class. Uh, what was it? Say it loud. Strengthening the simple minds. That was it? I think, yes, I did see the thumbnail. Strengthening the simple minds. So I, that was a very illuminating class. Um, and uh, there was one particular point that I wanted to draw from his class that he taught. And it was about social construction. Social construction. And uh, he made the point about what is a social construct? And he actually had the definition up there. So uh, put that up there. I gave, I sent it to y'all earlier, the brothers on here on the side. Put that thing up there. It's put a, it's, it was, this is the definition according to very well mind. It's some kind of a dictionary or something. But this is what they said about social construct. And the reason why I particularly like this one is because it had a more, uh, defined definition. I actually looked up social construct in these regular, like their five, like their fifth grade uh, dictionaries that don't tell you anything. This right here gives you a little bit more information. Let's read that. What and, is a social construct? Because this is what uh, the deacon was bringing out, and I think it was important to illuminate this before we even get into the class. Go ahead. What is a social construct? Mm -hmm. A social construct is a concept. That a concept. A concept. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be based in truth. A concept that could be made up. A concept could be just a figment of your imagination. Like they make a concept car, but they never bring it out on the road. You never get to drive it. Okay, read it again. A social construct is a concept that exists not in objective reality. Not in objective reality. Now, Deacon went over this, but the reason why I want to go into it, because I want to drill down in it just a little bit. Uh, a social construct is a concept that exists not in objective reality. Objective reality. You know what objective reality means? It means, like, when you say that you look at something objectively, you see it from an outside point of view. When they get, if you have an objective point of view, it is obvious, okay? And ob when you say an, an objective reality, meaning that it's a fact. You don't have to be brainwashed and, and twisted to, to see what it's actually saying. A social, go ahead, read it again. A social construct is a concept that exists not in objective reality. It does not exist in objective reality, meaning something that is absolute factual, that's research back. Okay, so a social, co a, a social construct is a concept, something made up that exists not in objective reality, meaning where people can see it and literally say, well, this is what it is. Like Jesus Christ is black. An objective reality meaning we see it, we read it, and we accept it. But a social concept, I mean a, a social construct, it's a concept that does not deal in reality, which means that they could say, no, it doesn't say that Jesus is white. That's a concept, but that's not factual. Social construct is what we're talking about. Read it again. A social construct is a concept that exists not in objective reality. Not in objective reality, but what? But as a result of human interaction. But it exists as a result of human interaction. What human interaction took place to cause this concept to be constructed in society? What human interaction took place? Social media? 
uh, uh, marginalization, persecution, and assassinations. Marginalization, marginalize you. You got the truth, you got the facts. But they're saying we're not paying attention to that. And if you keep on holding on to that, we're going to mon- marginalize you. We're going to persecute you. And we will, we will go even as far as assassinating your leaders. So that when, when we bring the Bible to the churches, when we bring the Bible to the preachers and showing them, and they actually see the words, and they're still talking about color don't matter. Because they're under, they're under the, the grip of a social lying concept. That's what we're talking about, brothers, sisters. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Read. A social construct is a concept that exists not in objective reality, but as a result of human interaction. It exists because humans agree that it exists. They, they, all, they simply agree on a lie. They simply agree on a lie. Let's see if that's in the scriptures. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter... Uh, 14, I think it is, 14 and 16, right? Yes, sir. Hold on a second. Let me get it. Let's read that. This is an example of a social construct right here in the Bible. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 16. Now, this is also, now, this is actually talking about ancient history, Tammuz, uh, uh, um, Nimrod. It's going back. It's going back into those, those eras. But I want to bring it up to the social construct of what's going on now. Read. Thus, in the process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. The ungodly custom is a, con- is a social construct. Read it again. Thus, in the process of time. So it took time to make this happen. It took time to get humans to agree with a lie, to get humans to agree with a concept rather than reality. Go ahead. An ungodly custom grown, grown strong was kept as a law. And they framed it by law. That's in the scriptures too. Give me that. Somebody give me that real quick. Uh, it's in the Psalms, I think it is. Shall, there, shall the throne of iniquity have that one? Uh, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with me? That frame is that one. Is it 94.20? I'm getting my scriptures mixed in. 94.20? Come on. Read it. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 20. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? Shall the throne of sin have fellowship with God? In other words, shall the congregation of God allow sin in the body? Go ahead. Which frameth mischief thy... By a law. By a law. Which frames mischief by a law. They actually put laws around sin. They put laws around protecting evil. That's what they mean. They, they, what is, if mischief is what? A man talking about something, he's a woman. That's a social construct to make everybody believe in something that is, objection, that is objectively uh, unconnected to reality. A man was born a man. But he says he wants to be a woman. That doesn't fit in. Uh, that doesn't fit in objective reality. But rather, it's a concept. And if we can get people to agree with this concept and frame a law around it, it will become as a law that what we're reading here. Y'all all right? Yes, Read on. You want to go back? Yes, to yes. Back to uh, Wisdom of Solomon. Solomon, chapter fourteen and verse sixteen. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. And graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. A graven image, for an example, is that image of Caesar Bogier that you call Christ. That, that, that white image, the, the second son of Pope Alexander the Sixth of Rome. It has nothing to do with Judaical history or biblical history or anything like that. He was, just, he was just a man that walked the earth. And he didn't walk the earth as Christ either. He walked the earth as a homosexual. That's what he walked the earth as. But yet, the people that knew him then, they, didn't, they did not, the social construct of making him into Jesus wasn't heavy. But in the process of time, when they began to really push that image on people, it began to grow. It began to frame itself as a custom grown strong. And then it was held up in churches. 
held up in worship, so-called worship centers, put in your Bibles, and you see that repetition over and over and over again, you will forget what the words say, and you will begin to say, this is what Jesus looks like. Read that again. A graven image, uh, excuse me, a, and graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. Go ahead. Whom men could not honor in presence because they dwelt far off. Go ahead. They took the counterfeit of his visage so, from far. So if, the, if, like, for instance, the, the image come out of Rome. So what did they do? They took the counterfeit image of Caesar Bogier and put it in your churches, put it in your worship centers, your houses, put it, put it in the stores for you to buy, put it in your so-called, in, in your Bibles. That's what they did. Read that again. Whom men could not honor in presence because they dwelt far off. They took the counterfeit of his visage Go ahead. from far mm -hmm. and made an express image of it. An express image meaning an exact image of Caesar Bogier. Like the Bible says that Christ is the express image of God, meaning that God and Christ looks alike. So they took the express image of Caesar Bogier and painted those pictures to look exactly like him. That's the reason why they all look the same, because that's the image of a man. That's the reason why you just can't grab any old white man and say, this is Jesus. They go like, that ain't Jesus. Mm -hmm. They say, you better bring me the real Jesus. That's how they talk, because they are going by what we're reading here. They took the express image of that man. And said, this is the Jesus, and if you don't have this as Jesus, you ain't dealing with Jesus. If you don't have this image in your church, you ain't dealing with Jesus. That's heavy, ain't it? Read. And made an express image of a king whom they honored, to the end that by this their forwardness, they might flatter him that was absent, as if he were present. As if he was present. We used to bring the picture out to camp. Mm -hmm. Hold the picture up, do backflip karate kicks on it sometimes just to mess, e just to mess Ephraim up. Ephraim be looking at, oh, God, I'm kicking on G's. We throw it on the ground, stamp on it. You know what I'm talking about. Eso Cristo. El sucio puerto. That's what they say about it, they're mad as hell. They don't want us to deal with that thing. Huh? So we beat we we pick the picture up, and they actually feeling like body shots are going to them. <laughs> this ain't funny, but I, I I think about the 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 terribleness of actually seeing that kind of reaction to a picture that somebody painted. That ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. That's what we reading. Read on, verse eighteen. Also, the singular diligence of the artificer Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. The the the, the what? It said the what? The singular diligence of the artificer. This is the artist that painted it. Go ahead. Did help to set forward the ignorance to more superstition. Did, did he, uh, the artificer did help to set forward the ignorant, meaning the people. The people are the ignorant to more superstition, to actually believe that this picture is Christ. And they got nothing to do with Christ. They are the ignorant that believe that that's Jesus. And set them to more superstitious foolishness. Read on. For he preadventured, for willing, he peradventure, peradventure, willing to please one in authority, forced all his skill to make their uh, resemblance make, right? of the best fashion. To make it, the, he said, his, in certain books, they said that his head was of the purest gold and all that. They wanted to make sure that they fashioned that thing perfectly so it can give more life. To it, so our people will be that much more locked into it when they see it, have it on their dashboard of their cars and their idols stuck on the dashboard and stuff like that, having it having it up in the and on your on your mantles and on your walls and thinking that Jesus is in there. That's idolatry. The Lord killed our people for that foolishness. Go ahead. And so the multitude, a Lord by. A Lord by the grace of the work. And the multitude, the, the ignorant multitude, the people in church, are a Lord by the grace of the work. Go ahead. Took him now for a God. They took this, uh, uh, this, this homosexual for Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Which a little before was but honored as a man. Was because little before he was Caesar Bogier. 
Go ahead. And this was an occasion to deceive the world. And this was done for the reason of deceiving the whole world. Give me that in Revelation. We're coming back there to see it. This is what it's talking about here. Who did this? The so-called white man. Uh, Revelation uh, 12 and 9, I think it is. Yeah, Revelation 12 and 9. Listen. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. This is the reason why I'm applying this scripture to them. And the great dragon was cast out. The great dragon is the so-called white man. The seven heads and ten horns is all red people. Go ahead. That old serpent called the devil. That old spirit of Satan called the devil that was back there in the Garden of Eden. We're going to deal with a little bit of that too as we go on. Go ahead. And Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. What did he do? Deceiveth the whole world. How in the world did this red man, the so-called white man, because he's the true red man. The Native American Indians ain't red. The so-called white man is red. How in the world did he de- how did he deceive the whole world? Listen to this kind of deception. What Bible can you pick up that have the writing in it by text where it says that Jesus Christ looks like that image? There is no Bible, period. None of them. But yet they say that's Jesus. It took some major witchcraft to make people believe. It took some major social construct. To make people believe that that is Jesus when there's no writing in the Bible that confirms that. But in fact, the writing in the Bible says that Jesus looks like you. So how is it that the social construct was so strong that it caused people to leave reality? To uh, ignore objective reality and yet accept a concept. Read. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So when this, when this man go down, all his Caesar Bogier, his lies, everything is going down with him. All praise to the Lord. We ain't got to deal with this thing for eternity. The Most High got to stop to it. Give me that Job 14 and 4. The Most High going to put an end to that thing. We're getting, we getting ready to get into our lesson. Job chapter 14 and verse 4. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Nobody can change what the Most High have deemed crooked. If the Lord deem it crooked, you cannot straighten it out. The Most High made this man to be evil and a demon and a devil that the Bible speaks of. God made it that way. Read on. Seeing his days are determined. Seeing that this man's days are determined, meaning God got the number of his months. Seeing that his days, there's a time limit on him. Go ahead. That's the reason why the scriptures say that he knoweth that he has but a short time. Okay. Read. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. The number of this man's months and his rulership is with God. Go ahead. Thou has appointed his bounds. God has appointed Esau's boundaries, his ruling boundaries. Like he set up the Persians, uh, like he set up Babylon's uh, rulership. He gave them their boundaries. And he had Daniel to write it down. He gave, after he gave the Babylonians, he said, now Persia, same thing to you. You're going to rule from this period to that period. Then the Greeks going to come in and they're going to rule from this period to this period. Then the Romans, was, which came out of the Greeks, was going to rule from this period to this period. God appoints all of the boundaries of everything. That's what we read. Read that statement again. Thou has appointed his bounds. God has appointed this man's boundaries. That he cannot pass. That he cannot pass. So when the Most High turn his lights out, it's done. There's nothing that a, that a Negro can do to save him. Because I know he's trying. I know he's trying to do it. He's trying to black highlight the Bible completely so he can make this man bend Scripture with a social construct. But the Bible is the reality, and this reality is going to come to pass. All praise to the Most High. Now, let's get into this subject. Um... The name of this class is called Following God's Vision That's Beyond Obscured Eyes. That is beyond obscured eyes. Obscured eyes meaning eyes in confusion. How they keep dust up on us to keep us from seeing reality, and that's how we live. We live like a lost, confused people that don't realize that you are the product and the creation of God. But because of our disobedience, Uh, The world is basically running circles and running game on us. So we basically have the wrong glasses on. We're looking looking at reality 
through Esau's world, and that's the reason why we are, we are at the bottom of all statistics, losing on every front, don't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, basically, as a people. We don't even make toilet paper. That's how bad it is, okay? Now, uh, give me Zechariah 9 and 12. Let's start there. I'm, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back into my, uh, to the title in a minute, but I want to read these things here. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 12. Come on. Turn you to the stronghold. Turn you Israelites to the stronghold. The stronghold is the Bible. This is, this is what's missing of, from our people. We're holding on to a social construct, but we're not holding on to the real standard, which is the Bible. Read it again. Turn you to the stronghold. Turn you Israelites to the stronghold. This is what's going to sustain you. The Bible says that the wisdom and knowledge of the Most High shall be the stability of your times. Okay, that's Isaiah 33 and 6. Read it again. Turn you to the stronghold. Turn you to the stronghold. Go ahead. Ye prisoners of hope. You prisoners of hope. We are hoping that we can get somewhere in this wicked system. You prisoners of hope. We are hoping and hoping and hoping. And never is it being delivered. They did not bring us over here for us to win in our hope. We were brought over here because we broke God's laws and we had to go through punishment. And the Most High put us through this punishment so that we can learn on what not to do when, he, when we repent and set the kingdom up. We're, oh, we're going to get it right when we get out of here. We're going to read that too. Y'all all right? Make sure that y'all take good notes because this class is going to start to go in some different, going go to some rather uh, treacherous waters, I would say. Uh, read that again. Yes, sir. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. You prisoners of hope. That's the part that I want. You prisoners of hope. We are in prison. We're in a mental prison, a spiritual prison. We go into church looking to get out of prison, and you're going deeper into prison. You got the Bible in there, but you have no idea on how to unlock that Bible to free your mind. And the preacher is making sure that you got the wrong key. Because he's on, he's on the take. Y'all all right? Now give me Proverbs 13 and 12. Okay? So we are prisoners of hope. Now we're going to read these scriptures in their entirety at the end of the lesson. But I just wanted to deal with the hope part. You prisoners of hope. Okay? So now... Proverbs 13 and 12. Read. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. Being a prisoner of hope is a terrible thing. We are hoping and hoping and hoping that we get some kind of comfort. Hoping that we can realize something that will help us. So you're constantly waiting and waiting and begging and begging. Praying for it. Begging for it. Go ahead. Hope deferred. Hope, def but wait a minute. The Bible says in Proverbs that hope deferred is going to tell you about as we continue to be prisoners of hope, as we continue to want to have these people to do something righteous for us, we constantly begging, please, 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 please. And what is our enemies doing? They're deferring the hope. In other words, taking it out of your reach. So our hope is deferred. It's out of reach. Read it again. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Maketh the heart, meaning the mind, sick. So us being prisoners of hope, we're, we're constantly begging and praying in, our, in these churches with white Caesar Bogier, trying to get some kind of hope and never going to get it. So we begin to uh, fathom lies and say, oh, we're washed in the blood of Jesus. Oh, we're saved. We're holy Roman. We're holy roller sanctified. And you know, doggone well, the society hates your guts. You know that. Every time you see, how, how is it that these Edomite guys that go do mass murder shootings and none of them get killed when the police show up? But yet, you just driving. And just because you had a tail light out, you end up dead. Right. To my sister, Sandra Bland. A tail light. Why no? Is she dead? Michael Brown dead. I don't care what they did. They, none of them do anything nowhere near as murderous as Dylan Roof, as what's this dude named that went to New York? Uh, I forget his name. That daggone beast. Uh, what's his name? Say that 
devil's name. What is the name? Huh? Come on. Nobody knows? No. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Read, man. Yes, the buffalo, the buffalo killer. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. So we're hoping for justice. We're hoping for, for some kind of... Uh, some kind of affirmation that we could become first-class citizens. Ask the people in the churches that's sitting up there with a Caesar Bogey in it and ask them to be honest. Do you really feel like a first-class citizen? And the answer is no. The answer is absolutely no. I'm going to tell you something that I saw, uh, and I've commented about this last way. Still try to find me his name. What is it? What is it? Peyton Gedron. That devil. Him. Okay. So I was watching um, a program and they had this, what was the name? Gino, Gino Jenkins. And he had this, this pastor that we uh, did the blitz on a few days ago. I think about a week ago. And, um, and the objective of the blitz, just for the point of me mentioning it, we're not trying to just uh, be uh, belligerent to our people. The objective is, is this truth that we're bringing out now needs to get to the people in there. And, and, and our people are suffering. And if the preacher is not going to deal right with that, then it's our obligation to pull the, put, the people, pe put the preacher's feet to the fire and say, listen, you in the church, you over these people, you have an obligation. You have an obligation. Right. The book of Ezekiel talks about that. The people that you're dealing with are the 12 tribes of Israel. They're the ones, they're the descendants of those that came over here on the slave ships. What are you talking about? You don't want to bring this truth to them. So, like I said, the people in there, they know that they're not first class citizens. Gino had the guy reading, I don't know if he, I don't know if it was a real letter, I'm not going to go into that, but he was reading a quote unquote letter that the KKK had sent threats to him. So he was reading it. And he had the guy reading it. And as the guy was reading, he was using words like, nigga, I'm quoting him. Your, you, you, your, your tongue should be hung out. You shouldn't be on television. They were saying all kinds of, of, of vile, vicious things about killing him, basically. Here's the point of why I mentioned that. is because I was looking at the people behind him. I was looking at the different people in the church, the women and, and the men in the church. And they look scared. One letter that, all, that a so-called Negro was reading, and as he was reading it, the people in the church that's calling themselves first-class citizens, they felt afraid. I said that if there was a sudden door that just slammed, they probably would have ran for cover because they were on pins and needles because they probably felt that the clan was right outside. That's the fear that the Bible says that our people will be in. First-class citizens don't feel this. First-class citizens don't have that kind of thought. And those people in the church, I could see. Now, that's like I said last night. That's my observation. But you are not going to convince me that those people were not afraid, some of them. Gino tried to hold it together, look, you know, look strong and all that, but I ain't talking about him. I'm talking about the people that's in the church. They look scared. Because that's how they feel about this man whom they've been associating close to God. Because they have not been taught the truth of this Bible. Y'all all right? Yes, Where am I? Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. Read. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Maketh the mind sick. So whenever we can't get justice, whenever we can't get uh, equal rights, we can't get an equal opportunity. And we feel like it's us automatic that you are second priority, that you are third and last priority. As they say, the, the last hired and the first fired. That's something that we are all familiar with. That don't happen to white folks. You have to go, you have to work four times harder to get a doctorate degree than a so-called white man. And you might be able to use the degree when you get out. You might be able to use it, and you don't put the finishing touches on the top universities and all of that. 
And you had to, you know, can you imagine how much racism and evil and bigotry that you had to endure just to get to that point? Huh? And the, and the further you go up, the whiter the room gets. Because a lot of the black people get knocked off. You see a picture, the graduation picture, all white folks in one spot. And he, they call him nigger every time they get a chance to. Y'all all right? So these are realities that we know. So the hope that we are saying that we are looking for is actually deferred. And when it's constantly deferred, what does that do to you? It drives you mad. That's why it says it makes the heart sick. It makes the mind sick. It frustrates you. You get angry. Then you begin to take dope because my color. You think something's wrong with your color. You start bleaching your skin. You start bleaching your hair because you said this right here is a detriment to me. Why can't I be like Suze, Suze, Susie? Why can't I be like Billy or Peyton? <laughs> Why can't I be like Dylan? Why can't I be like Manson? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. I, I, what are you talking about? People will love Dylan to this day. Are you kidding me? That ain't going nowhere. They love them. Right. Somebody, now somebody said, well, why, why are you saying that? Is America a murderous country? Yes, sir. Do the people that murdered and raped and robbed and pillaged the original inhabitants, are their children still here? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Are they reaping the benefits of the murder that their fathers committed? Yes, sir. This, ain't hate, this ain't hate talk. This is reality. Right. This is objective reality right. that everybody knows. Their children are able to go out here and marry the black woman with ease. So don't tell me that they want love and lick the crack behind his, between his buttocks. Read that again. Yes, Where sir. we at? Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. So it makes the mind sick. When we feel like we can't get a fair shake, can't get no justice, why in the world did my son have to die because he just walked through a neighborhood eating Skittles? And then I have to learn that the gun that was used to kill him went on auction and, and sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Wow. Because the cracker, the Edomite devil, wanted the, wanted the gun. I ain't being funny. I shouldn't say the cracker, right? Because that ain't biblical. The Edomite devil. That's biblical. Right. Right. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. He said, I want that gun. The gun probably cost $300 in the store, maybe $400 or whatever. He said, but I want that gun. I want to smell the gun smoke. I want to smell the barrel. This is the gun that killed that nigger. I want that one. So, how much? 300000 whatever dollars, such and such. Y'all all right? All right, where we at? Now, let's, let's, let's get into the lesson. That's enough. Uh, oh, one more scripture. We're still dealing with obscured. Deuteronomy 28, that's, oh, because I was making a point about Proverbs. Read Proverbs again because I left a point out. When I said that, read it, read it, read it. Read, this, read the part that I want. Come on. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Hope deferred, meaning when you can't, you can't reach what you're hoping for. People in the church talking about faith. They got faith. They got faith. They don't have faith at all. They only have faith in what the so-called white man tells them that they can have. And what they can't have, they say, it's all right in Jesus. Y'all all right? Yes, Read that again. Hope deferred. Hope maketh, deferred does what? Maketh the heart sick. It makes the mind crazy. It maketh the mind sick. It, ex it aggravates you. What is it about me? Maybe I need blonde hair. Maybe I need to bleach my skin. Maybe I need to talk and look and act like white folks. Maybe they, will, maybe they won't see my color. Because I want to realize this hope. Hell of a deal, ain't it? But this is the reality. This ain't a social construct. This is, this is reality. Objective reality. Right. Okay? So... With, with this, with, with the heart being made sick, 
comes, not only does it does drugs come in, not only does uh, alcohol come in, but promiscuity comes in. Psychiatric admittance comes in. Dope comes in, and eventually suicide. The way our people live now, they live suicidally because they don't see how to get out of this trap. That's the reality. Why am I here in this situation? Why am I, my and my people are living like this? And the preachers are not giving them the answers. So what do they do? If you're not going to get the answer, you're going to fathom or make up your own answer. It must be because I'm black. Because look how they're treating me. So it must be this. I'm, I need to get rid of this. I need to zap the nap. <laughs> Get rid of, the, get rid of the, the hair. That's the reality. It makes the mind sick. Man, that's, that's what's wrong with us. Uh, uh, Solomon, Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. So what should we do? Because it's a reality. We all trying to put hope in this system. We're not going to get it. The Lord said that this place is not our rest. So what do we do? We're talking about, and we're talking about our obscured eyes. You got it? Read. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Oppression, oppressing you from realizing the hope that you're looking for. Oppression is the opposite of getting hope. The oppression is the opposite of you realizing your quote unquote dreams, your aspirations, your goals. All of that is chopped off. And that's due to oppression. So when the oppression comes down onto you and you cannot realize your dreams, it makes you mad, which is crazy. Read it again. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Now, but the Bible says maketh a wise man mad. The wise man knows that he's not supposed to get caught up into this mess. So as oppressed people and you're wise, you know where you came from. You know your history. You know what people you come from, and you know what God you belong to. So in a case like that, when oppression comes up, it makes the wise man get some sense to learn how to organize. I'll give you an example. We get one of these unfair police killings where our brothers get killed in the street, and everybody in the community is upset crying and upset they killed so and so but they let Peyton do all kinds of rampage they let Dylan Roof do all kinds of rampage and the worst thing about it is that the news media tried to protect him by saying he was a lone wolf a lone gunman and say he was a teenager basically trying to infantize him make him seem like he's not a grown man, like they say Michael Brown. They say Michael Brown was a black man, but they call this murderous bastard a teenager. Because they want to turn Michael Brown into King Kong, but they want to take Peyton and make him a, a sweet little angel that just got misguided. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's what we're dealing with. Okay? So when they did that, the white man, Peyton and Dylan, they said, no, we're not crazy. We're not deprived. We're not a freak of nature. None of that. So the news, they were like, well, wait a minute. We're trying to protect you. Why don't you accept that label so we can try to help you? No, I meant to kill every nigga I saw. So now this, well, sh we can't do nothing with him. Harvey, the man just he said it on national TV. What are we going to do? Now we can't protect him. You understand? So that's letting you know the real, real ugliness that we experience in this society. And it's, about, and it's about time for us to face reality. We can't be scared, brothers and sisters. The scriptures say that the fearful will not make it into the kingdom. Okay? So it's time to, to see reality for what it is and let go of the social construct BS. So, uh, blindness. Deuteronomy 28, 28. Because it says, surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. So the, the anger that we would express or the mad that we would get 
we will learn how to organize and do the things that we are currently doing. Bring forth these solutions to our people and wake them up so that we can one day get out of oppression. Huh? If our people was really serious, there's the point I was going to make. If our people was really serious about, um, about being upset with our brothers, Eric Gardner, murdered for a pack of cigarettes, basically, Lucy's, one cigarette. I mean, basically nothing. And our brothers are being extinct. You know, that's generations of men, generations of people that they're killing off. You can't tell me that this is not systematic. They know exactly what they're doing. Okay, that's genocide of your sons. That's what's going on. And they, they say, we're going to start, and we're going to just say, oh, he had a gun, he had a this, he had a that. People that are licensed to carry guns, you know what, how much stuff you got to go through to get that? You mean to tell me you're going to go and deal wrongfully with the cop? Come on, man. N ain't nobody believing that. But they'll put them to death anyway. So here's my point. Then we're going to move on with the lesson. If we were serious, this is what I talk about black people. It's just fearful and scared. And they fit what this Bible says. Um, Deuteronomy, give me two scriptures. G give me Deuteronomy 28, 56. This is, this is why I say that the preachers need to tell the people, Geno Jennings, T.D. Jakes, Creflo, all of you, you need to be telling those Israelites that's in your church that they are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. And stop lying to them because you're going to pay for that. I don't care how big your church is. The most are going to get you if you don't start dealing with God's heritage properly and wake them up according to this Bible. Deuteronomy 28, 56. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 56. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not uh, adventure to set the sole of her foot. Maybe, maybe I got the wrong verse. Is it 54? The verse about, no, no, 65. I'm sorry, I had it backwards. 65. Yes, sir. Don't tell me dyslexia uh, is kicking up on me. Uh, 65. <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 65. <laughs> and among these nations... Shall thou find no ease? And among these nations shall the Israelites find no ease. Listen now. Neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest. Neither shall the soul of our people have rest. The people in the churches, like I said before, they know they're not first class citizens at all. Second class, third class, hell, no class. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart. Every nation that we went into, especially this country here, we have a trembling heart and scared to death. Like I said, that, that man was reading the KKK letter, and I could see the fear in their eyes. They didn't feel like the blood of Jesus would have stopped that man from coming in. He could have came in and did just like Dylan Roof and blew those people away. And, th and that's the reason why Dylan did it, so that you would feel like you have no protection. That's terrorism. These people are experts in murder, but yet we're a hate group. The white man is an expert murderer, an expert terrorist. How in the hell are you going to take somebody's land and, and the people that you stole it from, you don't even hear them saying anything? That's a major terrorism there. But here's the point. They say what? Read it again. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart. A trembling heart. Go ahead. And failing of eyes. And failing of eyes. There's your vision gone again. Failing of eyes. Eyes represents vision to be able to plan, to be able to organize, to be able to assemble and do something for your people. But, but when your eyes fail, that means you cannot, you cannot put muster any semblance of your intelligence to actually realize the hope that you say you want. So your eyes have failed. The scriptures say what? Read. And sorrow of mind. And sorrow of mind. Sorrow. That's that sick mind that we read earlier. A sick mind because your hope is deferred, non-existent. Go ahead. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. And thy life shall hang in doubt before them. That's exactly how the people felt in that church. Mm. With the blood of Jesus at the Caesar Bogier in their mind. Didn't mean a damn thing. Y'all all right? But here's the point of why I brought the scripture out. If we was to be taught that we're the Israelites, because there are a lot of these people in the churches, they heard it. They were there when we were standing outside trying to bring the word so they know that there's a, there's 
there's prophets trying to reach them to get them the word. So they heard something. They said, what them brothers out there trying to do? Oh, they're teaching that we're the Israelites. Okay, well, let me go see what this is all about. And a lot of them know this already. But because of fear of persecution, fear of retribution, fear of, of, of um, marginalization and assassinations, that's how, they, that's how they get you to conform to lies. That's how they get you to reject truth. Regardless of what's actually true or not, they'll get you to believe in lies and hate the truth. And if you stand on the side of truth, then they hate you. That's what Christ said. He said, know that it is not you that they hate. They hate me because I am in you. Don't marvel that the world hate you because it hated me. That's a social construct that wants to get rid of Christ. That's a social construct that want to get rid of the Bible. So, when, uh, whenever we uh, uh, deal with situations like we're talking about our brothers, they've heard this truth. Our sisters in these churches, they heard this truth. They know that they're the Israelites. But why is it that they won't do what this Bible say? Because they're afraid of the repercussions. They're afraid of that. And if they're afraid of that, they'll, they'll have a cognitive dissonance. That means they have a disdainment for something that they are aware of. And they want to distance, the, they want to op, put it off because it's like smoking cigarettes. You know uh, cigarettes is bad for you, and they have it written in the magazines, at least, as, as the Surgeon General has determined that it causes cancer. You have to ignore that to justify your continual smoking. You have to ignore the reality in order for you to continue to follow the same trends that leads you to nowhere in church. You know that. Okay? That's the deal. But the point that I want to bring about this is that with these things going on, if why people knew that they were the Israelites, what would they actually do? They would say, you know what, another, next time my, an, another brother get killed, another sister gets killed or whatever, Sandra Bland or George Floyd or something, why don't we keep the commandments of God? As a people, come Christmas, we ain't buying a damn thing. Oh, you get some, re you get some respect then. Come Easter, we let them, let them bunnies go, leave them rabbits alone. No, we don't want no eggs. What a, what an egg have to do with a rabbit anyway? Come Thanksgiving, let the turkeys go. Huh? Cut all that off. But we are afraid to do that because if we do that. There's a system out here that's called reward and punishment. They punish you when you go against the social construct, and they, re then they will reward you if you're into sin. Man says he wants to be a woman. They, re they will reward him with passing laws. You dig it? If you speak against that, you will get punished. You get ostracized. You get marginalized, persecuted. That's how we live. How in the hell is that a first-class citizenship? This is a reality, brothers and sisters. Get hip to it. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, where are we at? Read the rest more now. Yeah, come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 66. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. And thou shalt fear day and night. You hear this? The Israelites shall fear day and night. Who, who's that at the door? That's exactly the look that they had on their face. I'm exaggerating it, but that's what was in their mind. Every time you hear the white man call you nigger, chills go through your spine. Some of us. You dig it? Because they say, well, if it comes from him, it has meaning. For what? Why has meaning? Because you were terrorized into associating him with authority. Y'all all right? Yes, Is there more on that? Yes, sir. Come on. And shall have none assurance of thy life. And shall have none assurance of thy life. And like I said before, the people in the church saying that they are, they are uh, um, uh, absolved of what we're reading. We in the blood of Jesus, we saved and all that. That white man said, your, that white man said, you ought to have your tongue cut out, nigga. 
The people in the church felt that. So don't tell me the, that the white blood of Jesus, no, 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 you are terrorized people just like the Bible says. Okay, better get, get, get hip to what the Bible is saying and come out of that foolishness. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, you were going to say something? You gonna uh, bring I was up? just going to say they know, they, they was in fear of that because they know it's the truth, Bishop. Yeah. They know, they, they know the history, they've seen the history of that being true. That's why they're in fear. That's why Dylan Roof did it. I want, I want you to have it because he didn't kill everybody in the church. Uh -huh. There's some people in there that saw that go down. Could you imagine that? You in there rejoicing in the blood of Jesus. Bang, 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 bang. The Lord told me to kill all you niggas. And you got the people sitting in there hearing that. They messed up for life. Terrorized. And the word got out. In every black church. Then all of a sudden you get a preacher that's going to read a KKK letter and you're going to tell me that the people ain't going to feel that? They felt it all. You ain't no first class citizens. Come off that dope. Come off of that methadone. To, 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 to uh to normalize you to an ass whooping. That's basically what they do. Just, just numb your senses to reality that's supposed to wake you up. Y'all all right? I'm going to move on a little faster. Deuteronomy 28, 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 28. Now I'm dealing with the title. Following God's vision that's beyond obscured eyes. Our eyes have been made to be, have the vision that's in our eyes is deceptive because we were given the wrong lenses you, we're looking at a racist society that hates us. The scriptures say that. You shall be hated of all nations. What in the world is wrong with people's reading? They can't understand what that means? It means what it says. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. In the book of Luke, give me that. Luke, we're coming back to this. Luke uh, 171, I think it is. Luke chapter 1 and verse 71, that we should be saved from our enemies. Who's the we? In case somebody said, well, we don't know who the we is. Read. Go that, ahead. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. And from the hand of all that hate us. Who hates us? The hate group called America. Mm. The hate group called America. The United States of America. Right. The hate group that's called white folks. The hate group that's called the Arabs. The hate group that's called the Chinese, the Japanese. All of those, the scriptures say that we will be hated of all nations. All nations hate us. The Bible says what? Read that again. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies. And from the hand of all that hate us. And from the hand of of all that hate us. Exodus 21, 16. And from the hand of all that hate us. Listen to what the scriptures say. Exodus chapter 21 and verse 16. And he that stilleth a man. Were we stolen brothers and sisters? Talk to me. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And he that stilleth a man and selleth him. And were you sold? Here this damn bastard going to talk about. Deuteronomy 28 ain't talking about us. Talking about something, you shall sell yourselves. What kind of crap does he do? This doggone demon had to go all over under a rock to try to find something to refute the scriptures. And any, uh, any of y'all that believe that, you, you got your head up a cow's butt. How, the, how, is it, how are you going to say that you shall be sold when there's no seller? How is it that you're going to be sold when there's no buyer? The Bible said soul with a D on the end, past tense. And ye shall be sold. So if you were sold, there was a seller and a buyer that bought you. There was a seller and a buyer that bought you. Paid for you like you a piece of property. Don't tell me that that ain't talking about us. You can stick your head up your own behind. Before I believe that mess. Contort, damn it. Read. 
And he that stilleth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand. Are we found in the white man's hands? In our enemy's hands? Yes. Go ahead. He shall surely be put to death. The Negroes don't want that. Go back to where we was at. If we are found in his hand, we are found in his hand. He put his name on us for crying out loud. Luke chapter 1 and verse 71. He said, you're my property, damn it. So we're in his hand. With your hands getting ready to get cut off by God. Read that. And that the Negro don't want this. Read. Luke chapter 1 verse 71. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of... And from the what? The hand. And from the what? The hand. The hand. Of all that hate us. So from the control of all that hate us is the same hand that sold us into captivity, that, 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 that took us and sold us. That's the reason why this Bible is so beautiful. You're not going to give me no doggone dope to make me think that this Bible ain't for us. The hell with you and your mama. <laughs> right. <laughs> now. <laughs> Oh, Lordy. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, 28. Yes, sir. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. The Lord shall smite our people with madness, craziness, psychiatric problems, dope dealing, dope taking. Christianity, that's another one. Madness is Christianity. Here you're just sitting up there with a Bible all of a sudden. Tell me, you got the Holy Ghost. You got epilepsy. <laughs> Read. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. The Lord shall smite you with craziness. And blindness. And blindness. And astonishment of heart. This is the obscure eyes that we're talking about. Our, we cannot perceive reality properly. We're living in an illusion. Hey, brothers, can we put that thing up there that we had on Bible Book of Our Fathers last week? Last week about illusion. Put that up there. I, I have to show this to you. Was it delusion? Yeah, delusion. I'm sorry. Delusion. Wasn't illusion. Delusion. Sorry. Delusion. Put that up there. Hang on now. Here we go. Let's Def read it. Definition of delusion. Having false or unrealistic beliefs or opinions. An unrealistic belief or opinion is a white Jesus coming to save black people. When white people whipped and raped and hung your behind, all of a sudden the white man is going to come from in the midst of all that murder and blood and come save you niggas. That's how he talk. I'm speaking like him. Huh? That shouldn't be too hard. I've met many black people that were really white men with blackface. Y'all know what I mean by that, right? When I get a Negro coming up trying to defend white supremacy, Christianity, I don't even see black people. That's a white man in a black body. That's a white man in black face. I said, well, when the, when the real black man come up, then I talk to him. But right now I'm dealing with white folks. Because his mind is totally wiped out. As a man thinketh, that's what he is. Forget about what he looked like on the outside. His mind is white supremacy. His mind is Christianity. His mind is doped up. His mind can't see. Well, if I can't get saved and don't bring the white man, that Bible is racist. Right. Something's wrong with him. You cut, you catching hell from A to Z. Parents, children, your community's all messed up. Your daughters are, are hoes. Your sons are drug dealers. Your community's all messed up, and you don't you don't look you don't want some kind of uh, resurrection from that. The white man said, "You're all right. You don't need to resurrect from that because if you resurrect from it, I don't get paid. So I need you to continue to stay that way in the blood of Jesus, white Jesus. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Read Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight and verse twenty-eight. Yeah, yeah, that's what I need. Come on, but over that delusion. Yes, sir, I need that. Come on. Yeah, thank you. Don't let me there. There you go. It's still delusion. Bring that there. Hey, 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 let's go back to that top part again. I got to put it all together. Get, get that top part again. This, this is the, yes, let's read that. Then we're going to get the bottom part of it. Just, just bear with me, brothers Definite, and sisters. Come on. 
definition of delusion. This is what's wrong with black people in the church. This is what's wrong with the people in Christianity, so-called Christianity. Christianity is white supremacy. Having false or unrealistic beliefs or opinions. This is, and the black people that's watching this right now that's in the Christian church, they know I'm telling the truth. But the cognitive dissonance is there. They said, I can't accept what I know is reality because the minute I do that, discomfort is going to come to me. I'm going to be ostracized. I'm going to be marginalized. I'm going to be persecuted. Go ahead. Read. Go to the other one. It says, having false or unrealistic beliefs or opinions. This is, this is what Christianity is. Christianity is false. It's unrealistic for crying out loud. How in the world are you going to expect these people to really deal with you with respect and honor when they brought you over here as property? They don't even see us like they see themselves. They don't, they're not going to, they're not going to have that kind of conversation with you in reality. They're always going to see you beneath them because they say, well, you were brought over here to be the burden bearers of us. And then you're talking about some, oh, we're on an equal foot. And you crazy as hell, even the Constitution tell you that. Read the Dred Scott decision. They believe that thing is still in effect. They said the Constitution cannot change its construction and meaning. And it must be carried on from the day that it was written, uh, from the original date that it was written and, uh, for, uh, and adopted, formed and adopted. So the change of public opinion ain't changing nothing. So that's the real reality, even though they're telling us that we got certain rights, that the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. In reality, that's the reason why your sons are dying for nothing. And mass murderers are getting a trip to Burger King. Come on. Give us the second one. Here's the reason why I went here, brothers and sisters. Check this out. This is Christianity. I ain't going to forget my mix. Delu delusional. Maintaining fixed false beliefs even when confronted with facts. That's what's going on with the Christian right now. We're, we read out the Bible about black Jesus. That's facts. But they will continue to want to go with a social construct of lies. A, a, a social construct of a lying concept. They'll keep that going rather than deal with what we just read here. And this is a psychiatric definition of delusional. Meaning you deal with the mind. Read it again. Maintaining fixed false beliefs. They maintain Christianity maintains lies. Even when confronted with facts. I'll be damned if I can't find something that's more accurate of a description of the Christian in the church. I can't. This is, this is, this is damn near biblical. <laughs> <laughs> It this is. is maintaining a fixed false belief. Even when you're confronted with facts, here, read. Usually. I, as I, hey, I did that before. I had some black people. I said, listen, the church people, family members. I said, but look, the Bible says Jesus is black. Don't show me that. Get that away from me. Come on. Yeah, I said, look, look, look. look. What, what, what they say? Oh, man, uh, like y'all ain't seen it. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Huh? Show that to your mama. You got the devil on you. Mom, it's in the Bible. This is it. Delusion. Read. Maintaining what? Maintaining fixed false beliefs, even when confronted with facts. Even when confronted with facts. Listen. Usually as a result, result of mental illness. Deuteronomy 28, 28. When, usually as a result right. of mental illness, you're sick. Sick. The people in the church, sick. Read it. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. And a craziness, astonishment of heart, astonishment of your mind. That reflects back to what we was reading earlier. Uh, the deference of hope maketh the mind sick because you ain't going to get no hope in there. Exactly. You ain't going to get no hope in there, and you know that. 
And the people know that. What we just read here, the psychiatric definition of delusion is exactly on point. They maintain false white supremacy called Christianity, and they know damn well they are less than dogs in there. Mm. They know that. Even when confronted with the real facts of the Bible that say you don't belong in this crack house. And they still justify that mess. And what did, it, what did it say? Usually as a result of mental illness. That's what's wrong with our people. That inferiority complex that was taught to us in slavery is a mental illness. It is a damn near a per- permanent sickness. And it's going to take, take the real medicine of the Bible to get them out of that. And a preacher have an obligation, especially a black preacher. He's sick himself. He need to be getting this medicine so he can help his people out. But he's scared because if he does that, he knows that this wicked government is going to come against him. He knows that. Fear day and night. Give you there a trembling heart. Man reading the KKK letters and the people in this church scared. Now, I'm going to get ready to flip it around. All right. Following God's vision, that's beyond obscured eyes. And we're talking about our eyes that we've been trained to not see what we see. We see reality. The eyes don't lie. You can look and see what you see, but the brain that has been tampered with, not the Bible, your brain, the Bible's been tampered with. No, nigga, your head has been tampered with. The brain, I see in reality. But by the time the information from the eyes go through the brain, the brain says, no, you didn't see that. Then you come out your mouth with something crazy. What color are you, brother? I'm black. Huh? Let me see. Put your arm up there. Uh, and give me, let me, let me see your shoes. You put your shoes against your arm and you say, well, what color you are again? Black. I say, but... <laughs> Your arm is look different from your shoes. What are you talking about, you black? You're brown. I ain't brown. <laughs> the brain said, don't accept what your eyes just saw. Obscured. What color is the so-called white man? He's white. What? Give me that piece of paper. Hold it up to him. Come here, white man. You see. Look, put your head up against this here. What color is he? He white. What? You got red, red like that fire extinguisher. He talking about some white. The eyesight saw what it saw. Can you dig it? But by the time the information come out the mouth, because of a social construct made him lie. And everybody agreed that these people are white when they're not white. And they agree that we're black when we're not black. We're brown. Showing you about the con- about the. Uh, social construct and we will ignore facts when we're confronted with facts we will ignore it and that my friend is mental illness because your eyes are seeing what it sees but you're not accepting the reality now I know that we say black because you know it's a thing that we say it's a common term but if somebody asks you your color what color are you That's a different question. You can say, you know, our people in ignorance, they say, well, my nationality is black, and they'll say that. The so-called white man said, my nationality is white, and they'll say that. I I can never get comfortable calling them white. I can accept black more than I can call them white. White means purity. These people ain't pure nothing but Satan. Oh, he's listening to all that hate he's talking up there. Damn, I didn't know he was like that. Talking all that racism. That's the enemy talking. You think they're going to have something favorable to say about me? They want to put me in a meat grinder and eat steak over my dead body. That's how they feel. That's why Natural Born Killers, they didn't like that movie. I ain't going to go into it. But that movie was about them, 100%. Natural Born Demons. They hated that thing. (laughs) All right. Um, So, Our eyes have been distorted through the lens of obscurity 
And as a man thinketh, so is he. That was the point that I was making about our mind, our eyes being obscured. Okay? Therefore, we need corrective lenses. Corrective lenses. Lenses that are set up to correct your distorted vision. The corrective lenses is the Bible, so you can understand. That's what I'm getting at, right? So right now, it's important for us to understand that God created this earth for righteousness' sake. I'm moving off of the, off the jabs about white folks for a minute. Y'all okay? I said he done tore them white people up. No, I didn't. I was just reading the Bible, just reading facts. Just bringing out real truth to y'all. I wasn't, I'm not a mean guy. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus, the real Jesus. So right now, it's important for us to understand that God created this earth for righteousness' sake. He chose a righteous man, Adam, to establish this earth in righteousness. Eve was to be his helper and stay in her role in establishing righteousness that was taught to her by her husband by following the commandments of God. That God taught him, and he was supposed to teach his wife, but she did not want to do that. I'm taking a turn now. Y'all all right? Just follow me. This way you have to really have to get your notes together. All right? Uh, so God also created a wicked man, Cain, to show the difference between righteousness and wickedness. It's time for us to really start to understand reality in its pure form. God put those two boys in the Bible for a reason. And it's time for us to clear up the vision and see what God is really showing us. His days is not like your days. You have the chance of everlasting life. They don't. They don't like me saying that. I don't care how many crosses they put in their church with white Caesar, Boja, that stuff don't mean nothing. The Bible, thus saith the Bible. Y'all all right? But you, you have the chance of salvation. Think about it. What are we doing here? What are we doing here in America? Why are we here? How do we get here? Our land is in Jerusalem. What the hell are we doing here? That means something happened. And why did it happen? And who did we make mad to cause it to happen? This is what the people in the churches need to understand. Why are we catching all this hell and brutality and murder and everybody getting off and we get murdered for a Lucy cigarette? So, the Lord put good and evil on this earth, okay? So, like I said, the Lord establishes earth for righteousness' sake, and he chose the righteous man, Adam, and he wanted to establish righteousness through him. And Eve was, his, was to be his wife, is his wife, was his wife, and her job was to be a helper and a stay and a comfort to him in her role, helping him as a helpmeet to establish the, the work that God told him to do. Y'all all right? Years ago, many years ago, about seven or eight years ago, I did a video, me and uh, uh, Deacon Isaac, well, actually, he was an officer at that time, called, um, and she shall be called woman. And that class went down a long road of, of explaining the responsibility that men have. So I was getting on the men. Okay, but now I'm going to bring out the reality of what's going on with men and women. That's what I'm going to deal with this lesson here. And us being obscured in our understanding of what this Bible is really talking about is causing us so many problems. And, is, and, and, and until we find out what this is really about, we're going to continue to go down into a vortex of destruction if we don't put the brakes on this thing and wake up. Okay, the, uh, the generations are getting worse and worse. Our children are becoming more and more degenerate and dead. And there goes your generation. There goes your offspring. There goes your children. Turning them into homos. Turning them into whores. Turning our women to the point where they can't even hold a baby because they've, they're having so many abortions. The, wo the fetus, the, 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 the uterus is so, is so damaged they can't even carry a baby full term. That's some heavy stuff. This is a reality that we are experiencing. Brothers, not even dealing properly with the sisters, not dealing properly with the, with the kids. We better wake the hell up. We better wake up. This is serious. And I'm not smiling either. This is serious. 
Wake the hell up. It's time to wake up. So, um, so one of our oldest elders, Yaquab of the old One West School, the real One West, can I get a witness? He told us, he said that we had to learn the negative before we could learn how to set up the positive. When I heard him say that, that made a lot of sense. Now, he went into all kind of other stuff. Um, Mog and David, I'm not dealing with none of that madness at all, but the statement makes sense. Y'all all right? If you cannot understand the negative, it's, 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 it's damn near impossible to set up the positive because you need contrast. Y'all all right? That's what I'm going to go into a little bit. In other words, good is set against evil. You cannot determine what is good if good is not set in contrast to evil. How could you tell what good is if you don't have evil to teach you what good is? You don't know what hot water is if you haven't had, or you don't know what cold water is without getting burned by hot water. You cannot tell what daylight is if you've never experienced night. Y'all all right? That's why God put those two boys on this earth. That's the reason why his uh, continuation is, is, has a period on it. Because once the, full, once the fulfillment of his evil has reached its pinnacle, God says, I have no more use for them. Round them all up, the book of Obadiah, round them all up and burn them up and get rid of them. That's not our fate. That's his fate. You can't do nothing to change that. I don't care how sick the Negro is. Even though you try to pull him out the fire, let me give you a hug. I don't want to see nothing bad happen to you. He going to burn up. Then you're going to be snatched out of there. You might burn up with him. Y'all all right? So, put up contrast. My, the, my next slide. Let's read that. Contrast. We're getting ready to go to another scripture, by the way. Go to the uh, thing. It was the next picture that I sent you. I don't want you to look it up. I gave you the definition already. There you go. Contrast. The state of being strictly different from something else in. Hold on. What's going on over there? Read it again. Yes, sir. Contrast. If y'all need to do something, excuse yourselves, all right? We don't want to break the flow. Read it again. Contrast. The state of being strictly different from something else. Zoom, zoom in on that thing so I can see it. It's too right, right. There you go. Contrast. The state the, of being strictly different. Strikingly. From, strikingly different from something else in juxtaposition. Ju Juxtaposition, juxtaposition. juxtapose, as they say, juxtapose, meaning opposite. Go ahead. Or close association. Or close association. Something that, something else in opposition or close something. So contrast means the, uh, the other end of it. You all all right? Black people and white people are contrast to each other. God set it up that way. Oh, he, look at him, his racism. Uh, Sirach 33. Let's get the Bible now. Give me Bible. Sirach 33. He's going to start with verse 13. Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 33 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. As the clay is, as the clay is in the potter's hand. Listen now. To fashion it at to, his. To fashion it as, as at his pleasure. So man is in the hand of him that made him. So man is in the hand of God that made him. That's what the him is. Go ahead. To render to them as like as him best. Give me Romans 9. Because we're talking about good versus evil. We're talking about Adam when he had Cain and Abel. So here we're talking about contrast. As the clay is in the potter's hand, to fashion what's in the pot, 
to his for his pleasure so that so that this man that he's fashioning is in the hand of the maker that made him to do his purpose that's why it says to render to them as liketh him best as he liketh best you're going to fulfill my will he made this so-called white man to be the devil he made him that way. He made you black people, you black men and women, you Hispanic men and women, you Native American Indian women, men and women. You're the jewels of God. Read. You want to start Ro- verse yeah, uh, Yes. Romans chapter 9 and verse 11. Come on. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand. That the purpose of God according to God, how God chose to fashion them. This is about Esau and Jacob. Read. Not of works. Not of what they did. God made this decision before they were even born. Go ahead. But of him that called But them. of the maker that called them to do what he made them to do. Go ahead. It was said unto her. It was said unto Rebekah. The elder shall serve the younger. The elder child shall serve the younger child. God made that decision before they were even born. Go ahead. As it now is you see the reason why they got to get rid of this Bible. Can you imagine this is in the New Testament with all those dope fiends in the church? Why they ain't read this? Go ahead. As it is written. As it is written. Jacob have I loved. Jacob have I loved. That's, Jacob is not everybody. Jacob is you. But Esau have I hated. God says, but Esau have I hated. Who's saying this? God. What in the world is a clan walking around talking about someday next to Jesus? Lord have mercy. Read on. What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Is God unrighteous because he made a decision as the potter to say that I want this pot for my glory and I want the other one to move my bowels in? God forbid. God forbid. For he saith to Moses. Now he's going to give you some history that he did it before with the Egyptians. Listen. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. He said, listen, I will have mercy. Don't talk to me. That's what God is saying. Shut up. He said, I will do what I want to do because I'm the man that's making the pots. I'm the potter. Read. And I will have compassion. Read that statement again. For he saith to Moses. For he saith to Moses, come on. I will have mercy. I will have mercy. On whom I will have mercy. I will have mercy on who I choose to have mercy on. Come on. And I will have compassion. And I will have mercy and compassion. On whom I will have compassion. On whom I decide to have mercy on. Bible says that the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Isaiah 14, that's what it says there. Read. So then it is not of him. So with that understanding, there's no need to talk to me about nothing. That's what that part means. So then it is not of him that willeth. That's what it's saying, right? Read yes, it. sir. So Come on. then it is not of him that willeth. So you cannot will to be the people of the Most High if you're not the Israelites. That's crystal clear. Go ahead. Nor of him that runneth. You can't call yourselves Christians and talk about some of you coming into the kingdom of the Lord. No. You're going as a slave. Hell, they ain't going to last long because they're going to be wiped out. Right. He only going to have about a thousand years of slavery. Then the Most High's command is to wipe them all out. Extinguish them. Read. But of God that showeth mercy. So with this kind of understanding, the obscurity that's on our mind with this self-hatred and self-doubt should begin to clear up because the Bible tells you that you're the children of Jacob. Read that statement again. Yes, sir. So then it is not of him that willeth. So it is not of him that willeth. Nor of him that runneth. You can't run in a race to be God's people. But of God that showeth mercy. But as as, as of God that showeth mercy. He shows mercy to Israel. Go ahead. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh. Go ahead. Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. I want y'all to listen to this part here. Even for the same purpose that I raised up Esau. That's who we're reading about. Even for the same purpose, same means the same as, or just like the way I did Pharaoh is the same way I'm doing Esau. What did he do to Pharaoh? What did he do to Pharaoh before he destroyed him? He hardened his heart, but what else did he do? He built him up. Somebody just said it. He built him up. Where he was was feared as a god. 
He walk in the room, then they, you tremble. Like when the midwives was charged to kill the, son, to kill the, the, the boys, kill the male babies. Can you imagine how fearful that situation is? They lied to Pharaoh, all praise to the Lord. But they said, we ain't killing our babies. And they said, listen, these, these, these Hebrew women, man, these, these they, the babies come out before I can even get there. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. But the Pharaoh wanted them dead. Just like these people want us dead. Right. They want us dead. Because they want the people to stay in bondage. They were looking to kill Moses or the deliverer because they did not want the people to be taken out of bondage. The same thing that's going on right now. Same thing happened during the time of Christ. Same thing that's happening right now. Y'all all right? Read, read that statement again. Romans chapter 9 and verse 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose. Even for the same reason. Have I raised thee up? I raised you up, Pharaoh. I'm going to do the same thing with Esau. I'm going to give him the weapons, the technology, the guns, all that. I'm going to give him power and all that, where everybody will, be, will fear him like a God next to him. And that's the reason why the people in the church shook and scared now. They don't realize that this man got a time limit, like Pharaoh had a time limit. Read. That I might show my power in thee. That's what he did when he, de when he destroyed Pharaoh's army. Everybody knew that the Most High had the power. You're, you're all right? Yes, sir. The obscurity of the Israelites' minds, their eyes was cleared up after that. Then they got dim again when they got in the wilderness, got stupid. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. We ain't, the Lord ain't going to have that no more. Okay, a lot of people ain't coming out of this captivity. He brought everybody out of Egypt. Rebellious, Negroes, all kinds of wickedness, he brought them all out. The Lord ain't going to take everybody on this trip. The only people that's going to get out of here are those that's repented that's going to keep these commandments. The rest of our people are going to die right here with their enemies. So he ain't not going to go through this again. Read. Read. And, go ahead. And that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So that's the reason why he's raising up Esau, so that he can destroy Esau the same way. And God caused this man to build the weapons to their own destruction. Just think about that. I don't want to build a mom. I don't want to build a missile. I don't want to build a bomb. You're going to build it. Boop. Make them build it anyway. And going to make you make the button that, that you're going to press. I don't want to press the button. You're going to press the button. But I don't want to press it. <laughs> Read. Verse 18. Therefore, have, have he mercy on whom he will have mercy. Therefore, God will have mercy on who he chooses to have mercy on. Go ahead. And whom he will, he hardens. And whom he chooses to harden, he will harden his heart like he did with Pharaoh. And that's the same way that he's dealing with this arrogant beast today. Arrogant beast. God made him that way. He's a churl that the Bible speaks of. The, the, the anointed cherub. The evil. Read. Thou will say then unto me. Thou, listen now, this is an argument. Thou will say then unto me. Why does he yet find fault? God, how in the world are you going to find fault with the white man if you made him to be evil? How could you find fault with Pharaoh if you hardened Pharaoh's heart to be against you? I want you to understand the kind of power you serve. The Most High is going to make these people resist him so that he can smash them in your presence. That's the kind of God we got. He's going he gonna to build this man up, give him the weapons and the technology and all of that for him to get all big, bad, and nasty. And then the Lord going to kill him right before your eyes. So you say, well, what kind of fairness is that? Because you don't understand that God creates the nations for his purpose. Right. He didn't create you for that, but he created him for that. That's why he said, don't be trying to marry them because you don't know what you're marrying. The Lord, the Bible says that you trying to get up with these other nations, they will turn your mind away from the Lord. He was talking about the Africans, you know, the different African groups in Deuteronomy, but that goes with all of them. Because none of them are the Israelites. You're the Israelites. Marry your own. Be with your own people. Read. For who have resisted his will? Who can resist the will of God? If, if God made him to be evil and wicked, how in the world can he go off from that? How could, he, how could he deviate 
from the plan and the program that God put into his spirit. God made the man a man. You're going to talk about I'm a woman. That ain't going to last long. No matter how much a dog tries to be a cat, it's still a dog. Right. Read. Nay, nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that replies against God? In other words, shut up. Shut the hell up. Who are you to open your mouth against what I do? Read. Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed the thing? Why hast thou made me thus? Can the bold, the, listen, look, look. can the thing formed, God made the, the, the pot to move his bowels in. He moved, he made the pot. Can the pot jump up and say, why did you make me the toilet? That's, the, that's what it's saying here. That's the analogy here. Read that again. Nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that replies against God? Who art thou that replies against God? Go ahead. Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it? Why hast thou made me thus? Why did you make me this way? The pot can't say nothing because God the maker made it. Read. Have not the potter power over the clay? Does not the potter have power over the clay? Listen. Of the same lump? Of the same lump. Everybody talking about some. Everybody came out of Adam. Listen. To make one vessel unto honor. To make one people that I want to honor. It's talking about people there. To make one people to honor. Go ahead. And another unto dishonor. And I want to make another one to move my bowels in. I want to make another. I want to make one vessel to drink my wine out of. And I want to make the other vessel to move my bowels in. Go ahead. What if God, willing to show his wrath. Now he's going to explain why he's doing what he's doing. And to make his power known. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known. Go ahead. Endured with much long suffering. You know what that part means right there? He endured with much long suffering. Meaning the most I has emotions. How in the world are we going to have emotions and God can't have emotions? That will make us superior to him. A lot of people are those so called so called sick, so doggone sick. God can't hate. You hate. You demonstrated that. Right. <laughs> Perfectly. We understand what hate is completely. But God can't hate. God can't suffer. Read it again. What if God willing to show his wrath? Come on. And to make his power known. God wants to make his power known. Come on. Endured with much long suffering. Endured with much long suffering. Long suffering. The vessels of wrath. So God, uh, suffer, he, he, uh, he endured much long sufferings. What did he endure? The vessels of wrath. Go ahead. Fitted to destruction. The vessels of wrath that's fitted to destruction is Esau. That's the reason why that Bible dictionary says, which they wrote, they know that they're the Edomites. They know that. They said that she wasn't given any promise of mercy from God. Esau, it said, Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgments. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites that was not given any promise of mercy from God. That's what it says there. Read that again. Yes, sir. What if God, willing to show his wrath, and to make his power known. And to make his power known. Endured with much long suffering. God is enduring with much long suffering. You know what he's long suffering? Because he's trying to wake you Israelites up. I want two scriptures. Give me Peter's. We're coming back to this. And then we're going back to Sirach 33. Give me Peter's 3 and 9. And then I want Isaiah 42 and 13, I think it is. Okay. You got it? Second, what is it? Second Peter 3 and 9. Read. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise to, to deliver Israel. Go ahead. As some men count slackness. As some men say that the Lord is not going to do what he say he's going to do. Listen. But is long suffering. But is what? Long suffering. But is what? Long suffering. That's the endurance that the Lord is dealing with. He's long suffering to who? Toward usward. To usward, you Israelite black men and black women, Hispanic men, Hispanic women, Indian, so, uh, North American Indian men and uh, North American Indian women, the 12 tribes of Israel. He is long-suffering for you to wake up. Read. 
Not willing that any should perish. Not willing that any of his beloved should perish. Man, the Lord loves you, brothers. The Lord loves you, sisters. The hell with the white man. Not willing that any of us should perish. Come on. But that all should come to repentance. God wants you to come to repentance. That's the reason why he sent us in punishment. He sent us here to be, to, for us to wake up. He put this punishment on us to wake us up. That we come to repentance. Otherwise, we would have never been here. We would have never left home. The hell you bring me on some doggone dirty ship tied up. Defecating on my people. My people defecating on me. You got it? Isaiah. Uh, I got it. Yeah, read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 13. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. We're dealing with long suffering now. Y'all all right? Since it's y'all all right? Go ahead. The, the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. Come on. He shall stir up the jealousy like a man he of war. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. This is God talking. Come on. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. He shall prevail against his enemies because God's enemies are your enemies because we are one in Christ. We are one in the real Jesus. We are one with the Most High. So your enemies are God's enemies. And the Lord said that he's going to prevail against his enemies. Go ahead. I have long time holding my peace. God says, I have long time holding my peace. That's long suffering right there. God says he is long suffering because he has long time held his peace. Do you know what it's like to long to hold your peace? You want to say something. You want to get loose, but God cannot break his word. God gave you a time limit. God gave you a dispensation of time. God has his boundaries that he appoints, his prophecies, and he does not bend that. He does not break that, but that doesn't mean that the Lord enjoy seeing you down here messed up like this. God don't like that. He don't like that. Read that again. I have long time holding my peace. I have long time holding my peace. I have been still. I have been still. You know what it means to be still? He's holding himself back because he wants to break the prophecies to get in and kill. We're going to read it. Read. And refrain myself. I refrain. I have to hold, hold me back. Go ahead. Now will I cry now, like Now, that part now means he's free to kick ass. That's what that part means there. Now will I cry, meaning I'm free from my prophecies. I'm not bound by my word anymore because it is finished. That's what he's saying there. Now will I cry. Go ahead. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. Like a woman in travail. That's how angry the Lord going to be. Like a travailing woman. Who is this that coming from Edom with his garments dyed in Bosra? And he says he, he trod in the wine press alone and the blood of Edomites are going to be splattered all over his garments. That's Isaiah 63. Love that scripture. Read. I would it's destroy. Like, Man, why he love all this violence? <laughs> <laughs> I will destroy and devour at once. I, God, will destroy and devour at once. So when he's free to do this, he's going to get loose on our enemies. This is what we want. Who in the world don't want this? Here go a sick Negro. Well, if I, the white man can't be saved, I don't want salvation. Nigga, you just going to die with him. We ain't worrying about you. We ain't even worrying about you. We, we already understand that, uh, that two-thirds of our people are going to get liquidated anyway. That's all right. Y'all okay? As long as that salvation keep on coming. Okay, go back to Romans. That long suffering. Yes, sir. Romans chapter 9 and verse 22. <laughs> what if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? You know what it means to be fitted to destruction? The, 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 tailor's, the, 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 the tailor-made suit of destruction is fitted for Esau. Meaning nobody else could put that garment on but him. The vessels of wrath. Understand, look at that word. The vessel is something that you channel something through. 
God is going to channel his anger through Esau. He's going to channel his destructive power through Esau like he did through Pharaoh. That's the reason for the same purpose have I raised you up so that I can, so that I can show my power in, by destroying you. And that my name might be once again declared all over the earth. You mean to tell me the white man ain't ruling no more? Where is he? Huh? What? What are you talking about? He gone. Damn, he gone? He gone. Man, shoot, we can, we can have some peace now. Y'all all right? Hey, the tree's going to say that. Give me that, Isaiah 14. <laughs> the tree's going to say that. I'm going to read this one scripture and get back to my Sirach 33. Isaiah, four, uh, Isaiah 14, verse, uh, start with verse 5. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 5. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked. Because his time is up. Y'all all right? The Lord has broken the staff, the power of the white man. That's what this chapter is going into. And I, I hey, listen, this is so beautiful because nobody can refute this. Y'all making the Bible say what you wanted to say. No, it ain't. This, when you get to verse 14 on down, it's crystal clear that it's only talking about him. It ain't even talking about the other nations. 100% Esau. 100% him. Read. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked. The and Lord has broken the staff of the wicked. The, the white man. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Who opposed God. Read. And the scepter of the rulers. And the scepter of the rulers. The power seat. Is all, the Lord going to get rid of all of that. He ain't going to rule nothing. Read. He who smote the people in wrath. Who did? Hold it. He who's the, who smote the people. Who smote the nations in anger? Talk to me. Esau, you go in another man's land and tell him where he can and cannot fly his own planes. A no-fly zone. Who the hell put that up there? Huh? You just go on top of people that you don't like. You rule the nations in anger. Then you set up your foreign policy to make sure that they never get any kind of, any kind of protection to protect themselves. He that ruled the nations in anger. Come on. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. With a continual killing. That's called foreign policy so you can understand. With a continual killing. A continual stroke of oppression. Read. He that ruled the nations in anger. He that ruled the nations in anger. It's perfect. You know what? Let me show you how, how, how social constructed our people's minds are where common sense don't even work. Watch this. The United Nations building. Does anybody know what that building is? It's a world court. Can I get a witness? It is a body of where nations sit down and, and, and make decisions and arguments and bring up cases about what country did wrong to that country. It's a world court. Can I get a witness? They, saw, they, they bring up issues where they say, well, this country did this, that country did that. We put an embargo against them. We put sanctions against them. We do this, we do that. That's where they make those decisions at. Can I get a witness? So the, the, the building where justice is supposed to be happening at is sitting on stolen property. Where is the Native American Indian man in the court? Hey, listen, hey, uh, you bastards are on my land. Get the hell off. They on rest, they're in the bathroom of their own house, relegated. But yet you want to set up a court talking about what, what country did to that country. This one did wrongs to that. And a damn territory that the building is sitting on is stolen. I never could understand that thing. Hey, well, what school did you go to? That's what they say when they see me, some of them. Huh? Where in the hell did you get this kind of thinking? Certainly you didn't get it going through our schools, because we want to let you survive with that kind of thinking. Right. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Uh, read. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 6. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. With a continual killing. Come on. He that ruled the nations in anger. 
It's persecuted and none hindereth. Because that's what's going to happen. The most I got that part set up too. He's going to start sending, sending these terrorists over here. That ain't got nothing to do with the Negro. That's because the scriptures say that in the book of Habakkuk. He says, shall not all these nations send, raise up a parable against them, against him and say, woe be unto him that increaseth that which is not his. And the scriptures use the term caterpillars. These people are going to come in here, white boys. They look like Arabs. They got the Arab philosophy in them. They're going to set up cells and uh, sleeper cells and all of that. That's why they're trying to fix them borders up. They ain't worrying about the Mexican. Huh? What you got? No, no, no. I know you're holding on to it. I got to keep on rolling. I know you got it. You're holding the caterpillars, right? Yeah, hang on to that thing, man. Tell them where it's at, though, just so they can read it. Habakkuk 2 and 5, what? Through 7. So that's, that's some of the scriptures there. Um, so what I was saying was, where was I at? You had something for me, right? Yes, read on. Read on. Isaiah because chapter. Because the point that I wanted to get to is about the, the, the trees going to be glad. That's what I wanted to get to. Read. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 7. The whole earth is at rest. Do you all hear this? When this devil goes down, the whole earth is going to be at rest. Think of, a, think of a bird. A bird got wings to fly. They put him in a cage. <laughs> Tell me he's a pet. That damn bird mad as hell. <laughs> he got wings. All he could do is jump from this perch to that perch. Your big stupid self looking at him say, ooh, look at the bird. He, he, he <laughs> bird mad as hell. He want to fly. <laughs> Read that again, man. The whole earth is at rest. <laughs> the whole earth is at rest. And it's quiet. And it's quiet. They break forth into singing. The earth breaks forth into singing, rejoicing. Go ahead. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee. Yea, the fir trees going to rejoice when this man goes down. It's going to literally say it. And Go the, ahead. And the cedars of Lebanon saying, since thou art laid down. Since thou art destroyed, Esau. No fella is come up against because us. Because nobody else is the devil but you. That's what the trees are saying. So the trees got spirit too. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. So now that's that able call this hate teaching. I understand that. If I'm if if I'm the uh the the shepherd of sheep and the sheep are with me and the wolf is over there, and the wolf is like, come on to church. Come on into my church and learn the doctrine of the wolf and the sheep lying in green pastures. You be lying in green pastures, all right. But then they hear me say, hey, sheep, mm -mm, come over here. Stay away from that wolf. The wolf will say, you're a hate teacher. <laughs> That's what the wolf will say. Huh? Because we fix it so that you can't get bit anymore. Y'all all right? Come on. Let's get back to my scripture in, in Sirach. Sirach chapter 33 and verse 13. As the clay is in the potter's hand to fashion it at his pleasure. Go ahead. So man is in the hand of him that made him to render to them as like of him best. To render to these pots that he made to liken what he decided for them to do. Read on. Good is set against evil. This was the point that I was making in the beginning. Good is set against evil. We will not be able to tell what good is if we did not have to go through the evil. So this wicked man has a purpose. His job is to show us what, what it is like being on this earth when God's laws are not enforced. And you see what it has done. It has destroyed everything, including the minds of the people. Here you got a man born with testicles and he told me he want to be a woman. And they said that's okay. Here's a woman that's born with breast, vagina, and every damn thing else. She told me something she want to be a man. That's not God's laws. And that kind of sick thinking will destroy everything. Read. Good is set against evil. Come on. And life against death. And life is set against death. You cannot appreciate life unless you know what death is. Go ahead. So is the godly against the sinner. So is the godly is set against the sinner. So how could we determine what godliness is without the understanding of sin? That's the reason why we had to go through all this evil. Y'all all right? 
to learn. Read. And the sinner against the godly. And the sinner is set against the godly. So the Lord set up these trials, okay? The understanding that goes behind all of this that I have spoken above is to illuminate the benefits of good versus the detriment of evil. As in understanding the advantages of the day, whereas you, whereas you can see clearly versus the perils of night where you're most likely to get mugged and robbed. Y'all all right? You learn how to appreciate the daytime when you've experienced what happens at night. Y'all okay? So that's what we are experiencing living on this earth with this vile beast. Y'all okay? I know they really want to condemn what I'm saying because I'm using such adjectives that are just hurt, hurtful. But that's not no really. What I'm saying, these people do. So I ain't saying anything that's, that's violent. I'm just speaking facts. Okay? But they want to gather a consensus up to shut truth down. To have people to believe in a social construct and a concept that is against reality and to cause us to deny facts like what we're reading. Y'all all right? Okay. So, to get a better understanding, this is why it records in the Bible that in the kingdom, there will be no night there, meaning alternative to good. In other words, no evil. In that instance, we're not specifically speaking of physical day versus night. I'm speaking spiritually about good and evil. Y'all y'all understand what I'm saying? Okay. Give me Isaiah chapter 60. Give me Isaiah chapter 60. I ain't going to keep y'all too long tonight. I've definitely got to do some parts to this, and I'm going to stay on this topic because I need to finish all this up. Okay. I can't do the, I can't do the, Mar uh, Deacon Malachi, he took the, uh, he took the crown. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> they, they had us, they had us neck and neck once. I think I did a class for like four hours, and brothers and sisters were fasting. I said, oh, Lord, have mercy. I can't, I, I can't do this no more. Then Malachi said, oh, you think you got it? <laughs> five, five something out of a marathon. I said, oh, Lord, have mercy. I, I, he won. He, he took the crown. I lost. I can't handle that one. So I'm not going to do that to you. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, Isaiah 60, uh, verse 18. Yes, sir. Isaiah Chapter 60 and verse 18. Now, what I'm bringing out now is about the clearing up the confusion in our eyesight. About not understanding the program of God. This is the truth that shall make you free. This is what it is. The truth that shall make you free is knowing the plan of God. Knowing the vision of God. Following the vision of God that is beyond your obscured thinking. That is beyond your obscured vision because you're not seeing the Bible properly. Well, you're getting it now. Okay? Our people shall be all righteous. That's what I'm going into now. Isaiah 60 verse 18. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 18. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Violence shall no more be heard in our land when this is all over. Come on. Wasting nor destruction within thy borders. We shall not have wasting and destruction within the borders of the, of the kingdom of Israel. Read. But thou shalt call thy wall salvation. But we shall call our walls salvation. Y'all hear this? Go ahead. In thy gates praise. And we shall call our gates praise. Go ahead. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. The, the sun shall uh, be no more thy light by day. Neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. Go ahead. But the Lord, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. This is talking about the commandments of God, so you can understand. That's what this is going into. Read that 19 verse again. Verse 19. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. Go ahead. Neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light. Meaning the commandment is going to be forever. Go ahead. And thy God, thy glory. And the power is going to be our glory. The glory is going to be upon Israel. Read. Thy son shall no more go down. The son, thy son, your son, your wisdom, so you can understand, shall no more go down. Go ahead. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. Neither shall thy moon withdraw herself. Y'all all right? Come on. For the... For the Lord shall be thy everlasting light. For the Lord shall be thy everlasting light. This is the Bible's commandments. Give me Revelation. No, I'm sorry. There's more. 
and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. And the days of our sorrow shall be ended. This is what Isaiah 14 was talking about. Give me that in Isaiah 14 since we're talking about sorrow. It says, and thy, and thy days of thy mourning shall be ended. Isaiah 14, verse 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Come on. And will yet choose Israel. And he will still choose Israel. Even though we broke his laws the most, I say, I, I prefer that you, all of you, come to repentance. That's the mercy that he, he didn't give that to nobody else. That's only Israel. Read. And set them in their own land. And the Lord going to set us back in our glory. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And the nations shall be joined with us. Because they, they're going to they gonna learn to keep these commandments. This is all the other nations. Go ahead. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And they're going to cleave to this Bible because they're going to be taught this Bible. They're going to be taught how to keep these commandments. Go ahead. And the people shall take them. And the Israelites shall take them. And bring them to their place. And we're going to bring them to our place. Listen. And the house of Israel. And the house of Israel shall what? Shall possess them. Shall possess the nations. Go ahead. In the land of the Lord. In the land of the Lord. For servants and handmaids. Slaves. We're going to possess the nations as slaves. They're going to be made to build up our walls. And the nation and the kingdom that refuse to build our walls, the scriptures say they shall be utterly wasted. Read. And they shall take them captives. And we shall take them captives. Whose captives they were. Whose captives we were. We was all of the nation's captives. When you read in the book of Luke, it tells you that. Give me that real quick. Now I've got you going all over the place. Luke 21 verse 24. We was all the nation's captives. The white man going to be dead. Don't worry about him. He, he going to do his captivity and then he going to get exterminated. Luke chapter 21 and verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And the Israelites shall fall by the edge of the sword when we disobey God. This was the judgment that came as a result of breaking the laws and the commandments that Moses told us to keep. Read. And shall be led away captive into all nations. How many nations? All nations. We shall be led into captivity, captivity into where? All nations. All nations. This is the New Testament. How come they ain't reading this? Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. And Jerusalem shall be walked upon by so-called Jews. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until their bounds is done. Until their time is finished. Until their time limit is over. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. That's why it's saying it that way. They said what? Until the what? Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. When their, when their time is fulfilled, they go into 149 Psalms. So you can understand. They go into Isaiah 14. That's where they're going. That's what we're reading. Go back to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse through uh, 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them. And the, the house of Israel shall possess them. Go ahead. In the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. Slaves like they had us. Go ahead. And they shall take them captives. And we shall take them captives. Whose captives they were. We was all the nation's captives. That's what we just read. We shall take them captives who had us as captives. Read. And they shall rule over their oppressors. This right here is therapy. All that craziness that I was reading earlier when we started out, this is redemptive uh, therapy right now. This right here is the, this is the restitution that I need. This is the reparations. This is the repairing that I need. Right. This is the reparations here. Here go the way. Uh, we, 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 we give you 40 acres and, and a mule. No, no, no. I don't want that. I want the justice that the Most High said. That's what I want. Keep your money. How the hell, what kind of money you have anyway? Whatever money you got, you stole it. So how the hell you giving, you giving me back my own money? No, I need, I need your behind in slavery. Go ahead. And the, and See, the, God believes in real justice. And that's what you got to want. Read on. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. And from the sorrow. This is the days of mourning that we was reading in, in uh, Sirach, right? That's what we was reading it? No, that was Isaiah 60. In Isaiah 60, it said in the 20th verse, it says, Thy son shall no more go down. Stay where you're in, uh, in, Isaiah, in uh, Isaiah 14. Uh, Isaiah 60 and 20, it says, 
Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw herself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. That's what we're reading here in Isaiah 14. Read that. Verse 3, and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. And the Lord shall give us rest from our sorrow. That's what we was reading in Deuteronomy earlier where it says, Among these nations shall thou find no ease, and neither shall the sole of your foot have what? Rest. So all of the nations that we serve captivity in, we got no rest. They worked us to death. Now the Lord is saying, what? And it shall come to pass in the day where the Lord shall give us rest from our sorrow, from our broken minds. For, uh, f give us rest for this false hope that we were trying to get that never, that was constantly deferred. All that crying and begging. The Lord said, I'm going to take you away from all that. You ain't got to beg these people for nothing. I'm getting ready to give you the whole planet Earth and them as well. Right. Come on. And from thy fear. He's going to take us from the fear. What? The KKK is knocking on the, is reading. He said he's around the church. He's going to come and get us. He's going to take us away from that fearful spirit. Go ahead. And from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here's a good example of a social construct trying to obscure your eyes from reality. When you hear that part of the Bible there, and he shall redeem us from the fear, what does it say? And from the hard bondage. And from the hard bondage. Hard, not just regular bondage, hard bondage. What people on the planet that you can say, that you can attribute that verse too. Nobody but us. Right. Hard bondage. Why did God put it in the Bible like that? Because he wants you to know I'm talking to you. Hard bondage. Your names were taken from you. Your heritage was taken from you. Your children were taken from you. Your lives were taken. Your land was taken. Your riches, your diamonds, everything was taken from you. Then you was made a slave. And they ain't treated us right since. So how in the hell are you going to put that on somebody else? Hard bondage. The Lord said he's going to take us from that. Read that again. And from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. Where were we made to serve this hard bondage at? Right here in Babylon the Great. Read on. That thou shalt take up this proverb. So the proverb is this whole scripture. We are to take this whole scripture and do what with it? Against the king of Babylon. That's the reason why we're in the churches, because we need to wake our people up. Because the Lord is going to destroy this whole system. That we shall take this proverb and bring it against the king of Babylon, the so-called white man in America. That's what it's talking about. Read. And say. How have the oppressors ceased? And make mockery and say, how is it that you're losing your kingdom? How has the oppressor ceased? God is mocking him. Go ahead. The golden city ceased. Damn. The golden city ceased. Why is in America called the golden city? I'm going to go to America because the streets are paved with gold. Huh? How is it that America became the golden city? Because she robbed everybody else's right. riches and stole them and brought all her riches here, then brought us and souls of men and slaves also. Babylon the Great has that. That's what Revelation's talking about. That's what made it golden. What else made it golden? The talents that we were stripped of. The resource, we, we, the most valuable resource is black people. Took our music from us. Took our dress code from us. Took, our, took, took all our fine theater and arts, in, uh, inventions, everything that we've done. They took it all away from us and left us on the ground and still call us nigger. Like we ain't nothing when we are literally the jewels of God. Don't you women ever forget that? Don't you men ever forget that? Read. Verse 5. The Lord have broken the staff of the wicked. And the scepter of the rulers. So we was reading this earlier. Remember? Yes, sir. We went through this. 
So I'm, I'm proving that that chapter is against him. Okay? Give me verse 12, and then I'm going to move on in my lesson. Let's Isaiah go. chapter 14 and verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou fallen out of your kingdom? How has the oppressor ceased? So you can understand. Go ahead. How art thou cut down to the ground? That's what Revelation was talking about, and he was cast out. Which didst weaken the nations. What did this bastard do? He weakened all the nations. He was dropping bombs on them. Who's saying this? The Most High. Let's go back to Isaiah now. Now we got that understanding about that morning. And our days of, of mourning shall be ended. Read that 20th verse again. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 20. Yes, sir. Isaiah 14. No, no Isaiah 60. 60. 60 Isaiah 60. chapter 60 and verse 20. Yes, yes, sir. Thy son shall no more go down. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thy everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. And the days of our morning. morning shall be ended. But the Lord says that our sun shall no more go down, and our moon shall not withdraw herself. Revelation 12 and 1. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. This woman is Israel. There appeared a, a great wonder in heaven, a woman. This is us in our kingdom. This is history here. Go ahead. A, wo a woman clothed with the sun. We're going to find out what the sun is. Go ahead. And the moon under her feet. That's the sun and the moon again. That shall never go out. Go ahead. And upon their head a crown of 12 stars. Meaning the 12 tribes of Israel. Give me Proverbs 6.23. What does sun and this moon represent? Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. For the commandments is a lamp. For, the, for the commandment doesn't have an S on it, does it? No, sir. Read it again. For the commandment is a lamp. For the commandment of God is a lamp. And the law is light. That's the sun and the moon that we was reading earlier. And the law of God is light. What else is it? And reproofs of instruction. And this law, these commandments of God is reproof and instruction. Reproof of instruction. Go ahead. Are the way of life. That's the way of life for us to be reproved, for us to be corrected by God's commandments. That's what's going to keep us in the good case with the Most High. Okay. For an example, the pleasure of sin is met. With the punishment of correction. This is contrasting reproof. What did uh, Proverbs 6 and 23 say again? Proverbs chapter 6 verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp. And the law is light. And reproofs of instruction. And this Bible, these commandments is reproof of instructions. Reproof, reproof, reproof of instructions. Go ahead. Are the way of life. So that's why I was making a point of saying about reproofs are understood by contrasts. We get to understand the benefits of being corrected when that judgment comes on us. Because it, it teaches us not to break God's laws. Y'all all right? Y'all understand that? Okay. Revelation 12 again. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. So, so that's the point there. So now, what is the understanding about this woman? That she was clothed. She was clothed. That's what we was reading. It says, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. Okay? So we will be clothed with the commandments of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. Go back to Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60, verse 20 and 21. I'm going to go a little bit longer. I ain't going to keep you all too late tonight. Y'all all, all, all right? Sisters, y'all all right? I, have some, I got some good stuff for y'all, but it's further down. So, yeah, brother said, bring it out. Now, you ain't going to get me on no, no five-hour marathon. I got a lot going on here. Read. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 20. I might say, I might say some parts of it so y'all can know what's coming next week, Lord willing. I, I probably won't be doing it on this circuit, but I'm going to do it anyway on some level. 
whether it's locally or whatever. Read. Thy sun shall no more go down. Thy sun shall no more go down. Go ahead. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. Read. For the Lord shall be thy everlasting light. For the Lord shall be our everlasting light. Go ahead. And the days of thy mourning. And the days of our sadness and sorrow and broken minds and, and deferred hope shall be ended. Go ahead. Shall be ended. Shall be ended. Listen. Thy people also shall be all righteous. Our people shall be all righteous. Go ahead. They shall inherit the land forever. This is the commandments that the Lord is laying out for us. He says that we shall inherit the land forever. Go ahead. The branch of my planting. The, the branch of God's planting. You're the vine that God set up. The what? The what? The branch of my planting. The branch of my planting. Go ahead. The work of my hands. The work of my hands. That's what I'm going to get to now. Now I'm getting ready to get a little deep on you. Y'all all right? The work of my hands. Go ahead. That I may be glorified. So he wants He wants everybody to know. He wants the whole planet Earth to know how, like, like we was going to read in Romans 9, how he's going to beautify his, his people. Give me that. Romans 9, verse 3. 22 and 23. I need these two, and then I'm coming back here. Romans chapter 9, verse 22. Tw 22, yes, 22, 22 and, tw and 23. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? So the Lord is going to destroy the so-called white man for your benefit because he's the vessels of God wrath. Now let's find out what other vessel God got. Read. And that he might make known the riches of his glory. That God might also, after he destroys Esau, he's going to make his he's going to make his glory known upon the what? On the vessels of mercy. The vessels of mercy is Jacob. The vessels of mercy is the twelve tribes of Israel. He's going to make known his glory on his vessel, the Israelites. Read which he had afore prepared unto glory. You hear this? Which he has afore prepared, meaning since when he, when he said, let there be light, it was already ordained that you was going to be his people. So what are these people in these in this crack houses called churches talking about? Read that again. Yes, sir. Verse 23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Go ahead. Which he had afore prepared unto glory. Which he had afore prepared unto glory. The Israelites was always to be glorified. That's the reason why he named you Israel. That's the reason why he named you Israel. You are the princes of you are the princes of God. Prince, princes and princesses of God. You're the children of the Most High. That's why he named you that. White man don't want us to have that at all. He going he going he going to he going to scrape up a bunch of uh, red Edomites and say these are the Jews and give us nigger. No, you're the Jews. You're the Israelites. You're the people of God. Read. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 21. Yes. Thy people also shall be all righteous. Thy people also shall be all righteous. Go ahead. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. That I may be glorified when I, when I, when I show my mercy on my vessel, Israel. Okay? Now, here's the part that I want to bring out. When he said, the works of my hand, the work of my hands. Think about this. We, the righteous seed, was made by the authority of God to be in his image and likeness. Y'all all right? That's what he made with us, us men. Give me Genesis 1, 26. Give me Genesis 1.26. I'm going to go about another 30 minutes. Then I'm going to start to shut it down. But I, I, I got to get these parts in. It ain't a lot, but I want to I want to get, I want to at least get the discussion going so y'all know what's coming next. Yes, sir. Read. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. Let us, the angels, the black God, the black Christ, and the black angels, let us make man in our image. If the man is going to be made in, in God's image and he's going to make them out of the dirt, the dirt that's in the garden. What color is the dirt in the garden? We got a garden back there. What color is that dirt when you dig it up? Real brown, right? Damn near black. That rich, beautiful, dark soil. Right. 
Y'all all right? That's the beauty of black people. Y'all all right? Read that again. And God said. And the reason why I have to make such emphasis on black, because our minds have been warped to hate this. So I got to overcompensate. Read. And God said, let us. Because the most High got beauty in all, his, all the tribes of Israel. Read. Read that again. Let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. Go ahead. After our likeness. After our likeness. Out of our express image. Go ahead. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. So Adam was made in the image of God. So you can understand. The black man. Y'all okay? Read. Up, read. And over the fowl of the air. So listen to what I'm bringing up now. So God... He made man, I'm going to read it. It says, and, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth, over every creeping thing that crawleth upon the earth. So what's happening here? God formed us from his thoughts. The way he fashioned Adam. He pictured Adam in his mind. Follow me now. He pictured how to put his arms here, put his head here, and fashion him in the likeness of God. Y'all all right? Your body has a purpose. This is what I want to get to about you sisters. The Lord put, certain, the Lord put built your bodies a particular way. And he put it that way because it's a purpose for you to have it that way. I'm going to get into that. I'm hoping to get a little bit of that before I shut it down. Y'all all right? Read. Verse 27. Uh, nope, 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 nope. We're going to go to Jeremiah 2, but let me, let me bring some points out. So God formed us in his thoughts. Think about how things are made in the earth today. I'm going to show you how special you men are and you women. But I want you to understand the greatness that God, when he said he made man in his likeness, because you women, you come out of man. The man was made directly from God. When he fashioned man, he, he fashioned man to be a reflection of what he would look like. That's the reason why when you read in Daniel 7 and 9, it described him with a head and a body that had a garment on and a head of woolly hair, pure wool. Because that's a body. That's a man's body. In a celestial form, angelic, but it's still a body. So when he made man, he made man in that same form. And, when he, and before he made us as man, he had to think about the functions of man. Y'all all right? He had to think about how his hands would be used. He had to think about how his feet are made, how his legs are made. And how the two operate so that he can move from A to B. He had to think about that before he fashioned. He said, well, let me put him with legs and a knee. I had to put him with arms, a head. Look at how he designed the eyes. How he designed the ears. He gives you the ability with your ears to give you the two ears. He puts the ability in you. There's something that's called a stereo effect. Or stereo imaging, where you can close your eyes and you can close, when you close your eyes and you can hear sounds to the left and you can hear sounds to the right. How would you know where the sounds are coming from? Because the time, as they say about sound, it has a particular time. If the sound reaches this ear before it hits this ear, it tells you that the sound came from that way. God knew that when he made you. No white man created that. God created that. Gave you the ability to he put eyes in your head that could take imagery and form it into an, form it into information that feeds the brain that says if I keep walking, I'm gonna fall into a ditch. There's intelligence that goes with the eyesight from the eyes that God created. And we we have allowed this system to mess every damn thing up to cause us to abuse our bodies. You women, why did God fashion you the way he fashioned you? 
Why did he put your vagina? He didn't put it here. He put it way under there where before a man gets to it, he's got to go through some stuff. And if he talks some BS and you allow him to get, get there, now you have to contort your body to allow him to get in there. But he put it there because it's not supposed to be easy access. And you got to have a head that understands that. You don't just go mess over what God made. God gave the woman breasts to feed her babies with nipples. Just think about that. To feed babies that come out of her womb. That's no plaything. Like I said, going back to the man. Literally everything that you see, because I'm talking about how man was created. How God fashioned man to reflect him. But he gave you the intelligence to know how to use your hands to fashion materials out of the ground. Everything that you see outside of vegetation, outside of water and dirt, what else would be here? Nothing. Y'all all right? But he gives you a mind to envision the elements that's in the earth. And you have to see it in your mind first before you build it. You have to see it in your mind. If I need to build a chair, the chair's not going to exist before I create it in my mind. I have to think about what elements in this earth can I manipulate, can I bring out, that I can fashion it to make a house, that I can pull up iron, that I can pull up cotton, that I can pull up things to make clothes for our body. All of that had to come from a thought. All of that had to come from your mind before it came up. God gave you that intelligence. God gave you that intelligence. How in the hell are you going to let this demonic beast turn your bodies into garbage? You're not garbage. All of the stuff that come out of this earth, you have to think about it in your mind first. God gave you that ability to see that. Then when you see it in your head, God gave you a body with hands where you can take and materialize the vision that's in your head and bring forth the thought that was in your head once. Now it's reality. That's how God made you. Now you have chairs. Now you got houses. Now you got clothing. Now you got a building. Then he builds your body in a way that works with the female. You're going to allow some stupidness on social media to cause you to abuse your sister. And cause the sister with no damn sense to allow some nooker to mess over her. Because she don't know what God created. This is crazy. It's sick, sick society. You better find out what this Bible is talking about fast. Jeremiah 2, 18. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 18. And now, what has thou to do in the way of Egypt to drink the waters of Sahar? Or what has thou to do in the way of Assyria? To drink the waters of the river. Meaning that we're, we're taking on the philosophy of our enemies. Egypt was our enemy and Assyria was our enemy. And we're listening to the other nations giving us counsel. When God is your counselor. Read. Thy own wickedness shall correct thee. Your own wickedness shall correct you by following them and ignoring God. Go ahead. And thy backsliding shall reprove thee. And your backsliding, your disobedience shall reprove you, shall correct you. Go ahead. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter. Go ahead. That thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God. That we have forsaken the Lord. Forsaken this beautiful knowledge that he gave us. Go ahead. And that my fear is not in thee. And, and the fear of God is not in us. 
Go ahead. Say of the Lord God of hosts. Go ahead. For of old time I have broken thy yoke. And burst thy bands. That's what the Lord did when he took us out of Egypt. When he took us out of the Assyrian captivity, he burst our lo- He bust our yokes of iron. He bust us out of captivity. Read that again. For of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands. And thou saidest, I will not transgress. We promised that we will not break the laws of God again. But what we end up doing, we end up going right back into the same vomit, the same filth. And did it all over again where the Lord got really mad and had to put us in more captivity. Captivity after captivity after captivity because we never learned. Go ahead. I will not transgress when upon every high hill and under every green tree. Read that again. Yes, sir. I will not transgress. I will not transgress when upon every high hill and under every green tree. Thou wonderest playing the harlot. We played the harlot with the nations. You know what it means to play the harlot? We open our we open our behind, men and women. We open our behind and let Egypt bang us. We let America bang us. We let these nations bang us and rape us. And we basically been their whore, men and women. Go ahead. Yet I have planted thee a noble vine. Yet God said, I have planted you a noble people. You are a noble plant. I planted you with my hands, and I planted you to be noble. What the hell are you doing giving yourselves to nothing when I made you my jewels? Go ahead. Holy, a right seed. How I made you holy and a right seed. Go ahead. How then art thou turned into a, the de- degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? I created you noble. I gave you my laws. I made you above everybody. How in the hell you turn into a degenerate plant of a strange plant of a strange vine that I don't even recognize? How do you do that? That's what the Lord said. And that's how we act. That's how we act. Like beasts. And we're the jewels of God. We're the jewels of God. No way in the world we're supposed to be dealing with each other like the way we deal. No way in the world we're supposed to be looking the way we look, acting the way we act, not realizing that we are the jewels of God. He fashioned us to be like him. He sent his son to redeem us. What kind of love can you come? What kind of love beats that? He said, you are my chosen, and you broke my laws, and I got mad, and I cast you away. He said, but I love you so much, I'm going to send my only begotten son to be the lamb that I would not accept from nothing else. The priest couldn't sacrifice anything. Nothing could be sacrificed in order to bring you back to me, God said. The only one that I can send is my own son who doesn't have spot or blemish. I'll sacrifice him. You're the world that the Lord was trying to bring back, that he's trying to bring back, to give you a second chance at this. And one of our people that reject this, you deserve death. The ones of our people that reject this salvation of Christ bringing, you deserve death. Give me uh, that scripture in the New Testament about a more sore punishment. I need to read that thing. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Thank you. Hebrews 10. Lord have mercy. The blood of Jesus. You got it? Hebrews 10 and like 28, something like that. Yep. Read it. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 28. 28. Now, why are we reading this? Because this right here is showing you the love that Christ had for us, that the Most High had for us by sending his son Christ. I want you to hear me well. The, the beauty that he made you, the fashion with his hands, he made you to be his people. He made you women to be his people. How dare you allow somebody to mess over you? How dare you, brothers, not deal with your nation properly and let somebody mess over you? You're the Jews of God. And he loved you so much. And under the old law of Moses, meaning the laws of sacrifice, where we had to bring animals to sacrifice, there were certain laws 
that you could not bring no animals to sacrifice. There were certain laws that required your blood to be spilled. You couldn't bring no blood. You couldn't bring nothing. Those laws that said his blood shall be upon him, that means your blood had to be spilled because there was no remission of sins without blood. So if the blood of an ox, a blood of a lamb, a goat, could not be shed to redeem you from the sin that you committed, if that wouldn't work, blood is still required, meaning your blood had to be spilled. But when your blood spills, what happened? You're dead. So there were certain sins that if we committed, the only way that we, the only way that we could get uh, to atone for that was animal sacrifice. But there, again, there were certain sacrifices, there were certain sins that there was no sacrifice for. If somebody said that you was committed in adultery, you died. Two witnesses came up and said you committed adultery like they did with the woman. Where the Pharisees brought the woman and said, listen, we caught this woman in the very act. They knew what the judgment was. The judgment for her was death. But the wicked Pharisees, where's the man at? They're wicked behinds. You're going to bring the woman. Who the hell does she marry? Who does she commit uh, for an, uh, adultery with? Some figure in space? No. There was a man involved, but the wicked Pharisees brought the woman and left the man alone. You hear that? They're wicked as hell. But the point was, she was supposed to be dead. And what did Christ tell her? Show you how filthy these churches are. What did Christ tell her? He told her, he says, he said, right, just like that. He says, where art thou an accuser? He said, because he who is without sin cast the first stone. Nobody was without sin. And he says, woman, where art thine accusers? And she says, none, Lord, they all left. And he says, well, you don't have any accusers there, neither do I accuse you. But what did he say? You just said it. He said, go and sin no more. This filthy Christian BS. They allow the people to stay in sin, telling them the laws of God are done away with. And all those people that's in church following this filthy preacher, he's going to get them killed. He's going to get them killed. He told the woman, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Keep the commandments. That's what he told her. But that was showing you the mercy that was beyond the law of Moses concerning, the, concerning those, those uh, judgments. Now, let's read it. Tell them where you're at. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 28. He that despised Moses' law. He that broke law, Moses' law. Listen. Died without mercy. This is why I say the people, when Christ, when the Most High sent Christ to die for us, and we going to act like Christ didn't do nothing? Read that again. He that despised Moses' law. He that despised Moses' law. Died without mercy. Died without mercy. This man and this woman was committed adultery. The law says they must be put to death. That's what the law said. They shall surely be put to death. Ain't no maybes in that. You died. Read that again. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy. He that, he that despised Moses' law, meaning broke the, broke the old covenant, died without mercy. Died without mercy. Could you imagine what that's like? There is no, I get a chance to say something. Could we get a mistrial? None of that. No. That's, oh, no. The two witnesses say you did this and you did that. That was it. Boom. Go ahead. And think about how terrible that is. Imagine that. I want you to understand what we're reading. Imagine that. Some of the sins that we've committed. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Some of the sins that we committed. We would fall up under this and they bring you up front. You just got caught committing adultery with this sister over here. This sister got caught. Caught committing adultery, fornication, it's all the same thing. Caught committing adultery here, caught committing adultery there. And they got the proof, instant death. How would you feel? Talk to me. How would you feel? You was brought up here during the time of Moses. And you was convicted. And the two witnesses said you did this and you did that. How would you feel, woman? How would you feel? You'd be scared, trembling, scared to death, wouldn't you? Come on. How would you feel? Yes, 
So you're scared on that, right? Read the next piece. Died without mercy. They died without mercy. Under two or three witnesses. Two, three witnesses said that y'all did this, y'all did that. It's going down. Boom. And y'all telling me y'all terrified of that. Listen to this. Of how much sore punishment. How much of a more sore punishment. This is beyond Moses. How much of a worse punishment? Go ahead. Suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot and son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith. The blood of the new covenant as what? Wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing. You counted the blood, you counted the sacrifice of Christ as an unholy thing, meaning what? Meaning that you have a chance to repent from those sins that you could not have been, been uh, redeemed from under the law of Moses. But if you break what Christ did, that's worse than what happened during the time of Moses. And y'all telling me how terrible Moses is. Imagine this much, much more sore punishment that you've done despite the spirit of grace. Grace was the time for you to get your ish together. You didn't have that during the time of Moses. You got time to get yourself together now. You got time to put off the bullshit. You got time to repent. Like the scriptures say, I want all my people to repent like he said in Peter's. Because I'm long-suffering for you. That's how much I love you. That's what God is saying. A much sorer punishment. <laughs> This is just one example. That was it on that, right? And have done despite unto the spirit of grace. And have done despite the spirit of grace, which is mercy. That's what, he, that's what Christ gave to that woman. He gave her mercy. He said, go and sin no more. That was mercy because she's supposed to have been dead. He said, but no, I'm going to give you mercy, but stop sinning. That's in the New Testament for you filthy Christians. This was just one example of how far we strayed from God's creation. We became strange to God. We became strange to God. Uh, I think I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. Right? I'm going to stop there. No, no, no. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to pick it up next. Lord willing, I'm going to pick it up next week. I don't want to go too far. I got a lot. I just only went to two pages. I got like 10 pages here. <laughs> Deacon Abiel said, Dog, man. Deacon Abiel got on me. He said, he said, what? And this was after a four-hour class. And he said, Bishop said that he had a, he said, I got a packet. <laughs> but um, all praises to the Lord, man. Um, but I, I, I don't want to overwhelm you. Y'all all right? Digest this and we'll, we'll pick this back up. Your sisters and your brothers, y'all appreciate this class today? Yes, All praise to the Most High. <laughs> so I marked it on my page so I know exactly where to pick up on next time. Y'all all right? <laughs> All praise to the Most High. Uh, Saying happy Sabbath to everybody, happy Sabbath, uh, and blessings to our bishops. Uh, I want I had a part in here that I wanted to make reference to our Bishop Nathaniel, and I'll tell you the reason why we appreciate him so much. Uh, because when I when when the original school uh dissolved, so to speak, um, a lot of different things happened after the split and a lot of brothers and sisters went into the wilderness so to speak meaning when I say in the wilderness meaning they lost their way in this truth a lot of them went back into the world so during an interview where Bishop was with you had this Edomite that came and interviewed Bishop Sam Kastenbaum Bishop Nathaniel told him about he he said that that he had to I'm not quoting him verbatim he said that he had to basically set all this back up to continue this gospel. 
But the one thing that he learned, what we didn't really put super emphasis on back in the old school, was that the commandments of God had to be kept. So he made that law. When I mean, when I say made a law, I mean that was that was what it is. Okay, and that's why he said get the wives involved, the kids, all that, because the commandments of God must be kept. He understood, like we, the rest of us, we understood, but him saying it, we underst he understood that it's because of God's laws is the reason why we're in trouble. So that's the reason why we harp on that so much. And that's why, but by us not keeping these laws, it's the reason why we all messed up. And the Lord is going to continue to bless this congregation if we continue to follow that, that uh, order. Because that order is from the most high. Keep my commandments and live. It's a, it's a simple thing. And that's what he told this, uh, this reporter. All right? So all praise to the Most High. Glad to be in this camp, IUIC. All praise. Turn my mic on. All praise to the Most High. Hope y'all enjoyed the Sabbath class. Matter of fact, throughout the whole day, 9 a.m., we had Captain Lemuel. 12 noon, we had Deacon Isaac. And 3 p.m., we had Deacon Joshua. And last but not least, let's get a most high hand for our very own Bishop <laughs> Yawasop. All praise to the most high. All praise to the most high. So we got quite a bit of announcements. We're going to try to get through these, okay? We ain't going to. Let's, uh, let's bring our first uh, announcement up. We got our men's conference 2022 is going down. Y'all hear that, mighty man? The prophets will be blitzing, okay? Detroit, Michigan in August. Registration is now closed. If you miss registration, brothers, you missed it, okay? If you have registered and not currently in the telegram, DM, okay? Again, DM, direct message, Captain Manathias or Captain OC with proof of purchase to be added. All right? This is for the men's conference telegram. Let's play the video. I can't get the time off. My wife has separation anxiety. I don't have the money. I'm too proudful to ask for help. I don't, I can't, I won't. No, you will. You can, you must. Because they need you. Their pain does not care about your struggle. They need you to overcome. They need you to fight. They need you built up in the understanding of Christ. They don't care about your pride. They don't know about your bills. All they know is destruction. Destroyed by society. The bar has been set. Now which one of you will move it? Come on, let's give it up. All praises. All praise to the most high. All right, we're going to move to our next announcement. For the first time ever, the prophets, okay, Worldwide travel to the city of Philadelphia to cleanse the community spiritually and physically at the same time. Yes, exactly. Camp was held while doing the community cleanup on the same block despite the plots of the city to keep their communities filthy. Not only physically, but spiritually. Keep us in sin. Nothing but appreciation, people. Let's play that video. Shalom, 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 Israel. Yes, yeah, some of y'all say you don't, you don't know where we are. It's because you're not looking deep enough. We're everywhere, every country, every city. And then guess what? In your neighborhood, we're doing the cleanup. What happened to your churches? They ain't cleaning the neighborhood. What happened to the pimps? They ain't cleaning the, 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 the neighborhood. How about easy? They cleaning the neighborhood. This is a this one the neighborhood. Okay. So that means that we are you actually we doing more work than everybody else. We're not complaining because guess what? Guess what, man? Come a little bit forward. See, we are here teaching the words too, you see? Well, as I here teaching the words. You understand why we 
the neighborhood. What were you showing us? Uh, out of trash was out throwing the cans. I just took this this morning. Right here. This is. That was the before. Right. This is before. Y'all brothers came along not within a half an hour and did this. Which is after. It looks so beautiful. Okay. I appreciate y'all. All praise to the Most High. As y'all see, the work is being done. We are nonstop. Let's play our next video. Pastor Gino to come out. All right, so no. we wait. He's going to come out this way. Tennis has instructed all his members, do not engage with us. And y'all followers trolling our pages. Exactly. I, I can show you right now. Your followers say, come to this church, we here. They hate what I do. They hate what I speak. They hate that I'm Ellie. They hate that I'm me. They hate how I slide when I'm lost to the streets. They stand for my brothers who die in the streets. I move like a king. My blood is a cream. Smoking that wood with the fire I breathe. It's over to God while you hating on me. I move like a gospel. They hate on me. And we don't hear from y'all. We'll be here every week. We'll set up the mic. We got the mic system set up right here. We'll set it up. Tell Gina we ain't playing. We brothers, but we're not playing. All praise to the most high. History was made twice last weekend. After the community cleanup, the province, along with the general of IUIC, Bishop Nathaniel, swarmed the Christian Church of Geno Genes to respond to the lies told that blacks are not the children of Israel. The prophets challenge and debate on a net on neutral platform between Gino and Philly's own. All right. Doctrine Slayer to be continued. All praise to the most high. Let's move to the next video. We have the Kansas City Church Blitz. When we read the Bible, Christ at his own mind said, if you love me, keep right. the commandments. Right. But in the churches, they're not teaching the commandments. They're teaching that God, God said This is at Calvary God. Temple Baptist so Church. Oh, that's, that's, what's the way to heaven? Huh? What is the way to heaven? The way, let's get Matthew so chapter 19. What, what is the way to heaven? We're going to show you. Look, we're going to show you. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. Come on. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, huh? what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Listen, this is the question. He said, what good thing should we no, do that we should have how, how to I, get into heaven as an individual? And he watch. said it to him, you, you, why you, you, callest thou me good? He you, said, why are you calling? I am listening. No, you're not, I'm you're answering reading. the question. No, you're not, I question. I said, I asked you a question. How do I get to heaven? Okay, I'm, at, I'm answering no, the question. Ask, talk to me. Everything is in the Bible. Give me the scripture. This is the problem. The pastors give you what no. they feel. We give you the scripture. All praise to the most high. That's a social construct. What are you saying, Bishop? That's a, that's a social construct. We got the Bible, which is undeniable. That's, and, uh, and they're basically with a concept of Christianity, which is a lie. All oh, praises. Coming from IUIC Seattle. All right, let's play the video. Had their third annual Family and Friends Fun Day. And it was a success. Everyone had a great time eating and playing, laughing and hearing the word of God. Hey, slow, slow. Try Christ bless. Hey, man, it's another year. It's another summer. Blitzing. Doing all this. That's what I've been doing. Reaching out to the community. It's IUIC Seattle 2022 Family and Friends Fund. We know carry goods in on the arm. We know carry goods in on the arm. Everybody feel right, right. Good vibes in any place all night. Cause we don't carry goods, be people. We don't have time for your study, no evil. Don't make them catch you when they fight. Energy, smiling on your face, but me, I tell like them my enemy. Oh, praise. Let's give it up. That's right. IUIC Seattle. Not only that, 
We're going to move on to our next one. Not only did they have a third annual family and friends day, but also the brothers went out there and blitz. Let's show that. Right outside, listen to me, everybody. The Israelites are out here. These young men who are very confrontational, they're not willing to be converted. They, don't, they just want to argue. I need you to act like they don't even exist. The pastor lied to you and said, we're all about argument. We're not here to argue. I have questions. Fool yourself, Pastor. That's right, the Israelites, we do exist. Tell that lie. Moving on to our next one, okay? The mission continues. IUIC Columbus had an opportunity to sit down, okay, with the pastor of Charisma Word Ministries. And we blew his mind with the Word of God. Let's show that. You gon' show that you man. You talking about we ain't gotta keep the law. It's clear that you lack understanding. And we got our boots on the ground. We look just like shooting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a mind blowing um, experience tonight. Work move around. I'm deep in the cup with this wool. You might just get cut with this wool. Consider your way. Repent that you die with destruction like never before. You see us on corners. It's up to you now to what? To take this and share it with your all praise we're about that work <laughs> moving on to our next video from iuic jackson mississippi um dr neil mm -hmm. um we appreciate the opportunity we've been reaching out to several pastors throughout the city and throughout the state and the country um about having this formal meeting and us at least being able to show you what it is that we're doing and what we're trying to do and see if it lines up with what you're trying to do. Uh, we don't have a cultural identity. And same thing with the church. Right. You know, we've created this cultural identity of the church. The having the following of the commandments, mm -hmm. you know, adhering to them is what we should be doing. And we've gotten away from that. We've gotten lax, including right. myself. Right. <laughs> you know, so to not be a Hypocrite, well, just don't preach about it. Right. Just don't teach about it. Do we then make void the law through faith? So do we void out God's laws through our faith? Go ahead. God forbid. God forbid. No, we're not to do that. Yeah. Yeah. We establish the law. We must establish. So we're talking about collaborative work. The only way we collab, give me Amos 3 and 3. I got to read this. No more scriptures. No. I got to read this. No, 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 no. I don't want the scripture. I want, you know, I want to see what is that aside from scriptural reference, mm -hmm. because I, I guarantee you myself, many other Christian pastors won't fall under the umbrella. <laughs> These good folk ain't about to leave Methodism. <laughs> right. Maybe. <laughs> I doubt Maybe they won't. We're talking to, to a published academic okay, okay. with doctorate, oh, you know. Yeah. That's why I can go to a mosque and work with an imam. That's not what the apostles of Christ I, I, I know. But I'm not dealing with the apostle. I'm not an apostle. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have no access to the foundation. The foundation That's is Christ. No, 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 no. Christ is the no, foundation. No, 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 no. My point is, we don't have a foundation. Our foundation, even though it comes from this scripture, is flawed. So the scriptures are flawed. The scriptures are flawed. IUIC Jackson, Mississippi, had an opportunity to present biblical solutions to Dr. Lorenzo Neal of New Bethel AME Zion Church. Unfortunately, he doesn't believe that repenting and keeping the commandments as an Israelite is something he and his congregation will do. He even got agitated at the word. Be sure to look out for the full video to be released, to be released this week of the full interaction on IUIC Mississippi Burning on YouTube channel.
All praise the most high. Damn. Sad to see, but it is what it is. Let's move on to our next video. That's the grip of that uh, social construct again. Mm. They don't want to face that retribution. They don't want to face that uh, that being uh, marginalized persecution. They don't want to face that, the repercussions from turning against white supremacy. Next video. We ain't gonna give it to it all. Original Royalty Records presents I'm With God. That's a rail. Premiere tonight on Original Royalty Records, the second video release. I am with God. I'm with God from a rail from his second album, Faith and Works, available only on Original Royalty. All digital stores and streaming sites. Okay? Put that other picture up there, Faith and Works. So they can see that. Original Royalty Records, all right? Music on all social media. That's it. Give me my next picture. Let them see that. Also, all right, we'll keep it. There we go, right there, all right? Also, give me my next. Let's subscribe, okay? YouTube.com. At IUIC Carolinas in the Classroom. Check out the IUIC Carolinas in the Classroom YouTube page. Scan the QR code and subscribe today. Click the ball to turn on your notifications and be alerted whenever we drop new classroom videos. All praise to the most high. Let's go to uh, next. We have the Orlando Film Festival. So they can actually put their phones to this to the screen, you know. Yes, sir. Do this. All right, all praises. Yeah, let's 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 get that thing in. Taking it to the next level. All praises. We got the next one, the Orlando Film Festival. Joseph's Dream. I want to welcome everybody to the Orlando International Film Festival, um, founded by Dr. Uh, Florence Alexander. Can we please give her a hand? So our first performance for the night is gonna be Miss Harriet, other, other no, better known as Dr. Sweetie. She's gonna perform a song tonight for our first opening act.
2022 Orlando International Film Festival category Best Short Film. Executive producer, Bishop Nathaniel Judah Ben Israel. Bishop Yarosak Israel. Executive producer, Bishop Kanai Gamar Israel. The film is Joseph's Dream. County. Tonight, winners received awards in a number of categories. That includes Joseph's Dream, which won for Best Short Film. Director Isaac Israel. Yeah. 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 It took us about eight months to put everything together as far as organizing, but we only had two days to film because of everybody's schedule. We had a lot of volunteers, um, interns, and so forth. So we did have um, constraints due to time, but the people that um, assisted me in directing the film, we put our minds together and we was able to accomplish what needed to be done in two days. The festival featured more than 300 films around the world. Here on behalf of Joseph Green, to accept the award, we have Deacon Isaac Beniah Israel. From the director of the film. All praises to the Most High God, first and foremost, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right up, um, overwhelmed right now. I ain't gonna cry, it's far from me to cry. Overwhelmed, I would like to um, receive this award on behalf on the uh, producers, the advisors, uh, Bishop Nathaniel, uh, Bishop uh, Yawasa, Bishop Kanai. Um, they give us the inspiration and the guidance that we needed to put this short film together. Um, our hope and wishes was to make it a little longer maybe two hour, two hour film, but unfortunately that didn't happen. Hopefully, you know, God will open up the doors for us to produce something bigger and better um, in the future. Um, for those of you who supported the film uh, via do donations and so forth, we thank you, God thanks you. Um, just like the young lady that came up before, you know, faith without works is dead. All right. All right? So um, our, our vision is to basically bring the Bible to a reality and give an accurate depiction of the Bible. All right, the Bible's a bestseller. It's a bestseller for a reason. Right. Um, and I'll be missed if I uh, to die. Um. So yeah, for those who don't know, my name is Jedaya uh, Israel. Um, I met Isaac, you know, shortly after I. Military to move to Texas. So um, I just want to say we couldn't have put this film together without the help of every single one of you guys who supported and donated. We had a lot of volunteers who, um, you know, didn't get paid. They took their time off their job in order to, you know, help and to support in all the ways that they can. So I want to give a special thank you to them as well as um, Isaac for, you know, and. First, I, I should have said the Most High first, because we, we all know that we are just vessels. And I just want to thank the Most High for using us as vessels in order to, um, you know, put this together. So, so hopefully you guys enjoy it and you see it. And um, that's all I got. Mommy, Daddy, now, now, for my premier film of the film festival, award winner, Joseph's Dream. You are now flying. Southwest! You Man. <laughs> Terry Cruz, that's one of the best clips I've seen. Period. Man, God's all over that man. If y'all haven't seen it, see it. I promise you. You won't be disappointed. Hey, come on, let's give it up. Oh, praise to the most high. 
Joseph Dream continue its tour. This time in Orlando, Florida is what y'all just saw. The film was entered into the Orlando International Film Festival along, okay, with 300 other films. All praises to the father. Joseph Dream was awarded Best Short Film of 2022. This was the first time the film was shown to members of the world. And everyone gave rave reviews. Continue to support the mission and donate at Matthew213.com. Lord's will, we see it here in the Carolina soon, so give it up. Yeah. Joseph Dream. Yeah. All praises. We're winding down now to the last few of our announcements, getting to the end. Let's go ahead and play the next video, please. One of them is 42 seconds, the other one's 116. We got it? Rolling pretty good, let's keep it going. When I look in the mirror, I see a god of this earth. A young prince of the power ordained to govern the earth. One surely to be more precious than fine gold. My worth above stars, moon, and the creatures upon the earth. And I blink a couple times, and another man comes to surface. I hate him. He smells of death, and his talk is of sinful burdens. Been plaguing me many years, separating me from my strength. And the Lord regained mercy, swore a buckler and shield. The first, see, he's the spiritual. Second, was born from sin. A product of the environment, struggles that form within. Like fornication and wrath, I don't disguise. Of envy, murder in vain, glory is killing the nation. Daily, the two of us fight. We wrestle. I take my jab for the All oh, praises. That's coming from Toronto, Canada. Let's keep it moving. The next one. IUIC Canada breaks ground for the very first time in Nova Scotia, the largest black community in Canada known as North Preston, definitely felt our presence and asked for us to return. Be on the lookout for the official documentary. Let's move on. Come on, let's give it up. All right, let's move on to our next one in case y'all missed last week. The madness continues. But that ain't going to stop the most high God. Say that again. Right. That's right. We got it. The 
Cummings, IUIC, boom cars, okay? All right, well, that's it. We're going to move on. He says it's only two seconds. All right, y'all definitely subscribe to that. IUIC boom cards. And this is what I want to get to. Let's move on. Well, anytime I hear a Negro that is against unity, that is against organization, don't come in the room with me. Thousands of women that have no leaders. Thousands of men that have no leaders, no role models, no nothing. But I was very happy to see the efforts that we're doing. And we're the ones that's going to get it done. That's what you have to understand. Don't pass it to somebody else. What the hell did the Lord put a, a heart and a life in your body for you to sit and say, no, I'm going to wait for the next group to do it. He put it in you. Make your life count for something. All crazy. As we know, IUIC Gastonia Grand Opening was a few weeks ago. If you weren't able to see the school and the hard work that went into it, fear not. We will soon be releasing a documentary on what the Lord has allowed us to bring forth in the spirit of unity and in the faith of Christ. All praise to the Most High. Right. Next one, publishing media, professional with Sister Ivy, okay? Live July the 17th, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? If you're interested in becoming a media professional, then tune in on Sunday, July the 17th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time to IUIC's Career Talk. Sister Ivy will be detailing the ins and outs to becoming a successful Media publisher, all right? Get with your hey, camp this, leaders for the career talk link. Right. This is a good way to change that madness in social media. We, we can actually use, because it's a good tool, but it's just used for filth. Now we have an opportunity to do the right thing with it. So, you know, like I was saying in the film, we're the ones that's got to do it. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. We do it. This is our last one here, last two, right? Again, like I said, this is the one I've been looking for. What's your name, brother? I'm Brother Baker. You're Brother Baker. Okay, I'm just with that. We're trying to organize our race. That's it. That's it. Before destruction comes. And it's coming. You see what's happening in Ukraine? It's only going to escalate. And all this. Ha, 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 and Holy Ghost, stop it! Holy Ghost! I am in the church! Yes, sir! Yes! Examine yourself! God ain't dealt with you! Go back! Go back! Go back! Go back! Go back! Yeah, so James bad. Brown, man, throw the cape on him. Yes! Glory to take God, glory to God. Hallelujah. That ain't what we're supposed to be doing. Must be out in the streets teaching our people on. Look at these girls on the corner with those skirts on. Come on, man. Right here across the street from Jenny, Gino, Jenny's Church. Gino Jenny's Church. Well, his name is something Israel, but. What's your name? Israel. That's your name, Israel? Yes, that is my name, Israel. He's gonna read a bunch of scriptures, and to the ignorant, they're gonna think he's doing something. Until I place his feet in the fire. Hey, Amen. I know what the action. Sunday worship is unbiblical. I know what scriptures to get to pin your shoulders down. He wanted to make the blood, he wanted to make who we are as a race. Stop the BS, that's what he's saying. Stop the BS, gotta stop. It is like, but... I know what biblical submission hold to put you in to make you tap out. 
And if you think we saw them, if you think it's Pentecostal, prove it in the scriptures. Oh, okay. Because I was looking at uh, Gina's biography. It said one, one that's Pentecostal. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Yeah, we don't, we not, oh, he's we, in there now? Yeah, yeah. And we're not doing what we do. We do. All right, so we're we'll waiting. He's going to come out this way. But we can wait for him. But his name is something Israel, but... White Jesus, unbiblical. The arrogance of this brother is unbiblical. Unity is what the Bible says. Jephthah 2 and 1, Ephesians 4 and 3. We got to come together as the Israelites. Not as niggas, not as Baptists, not as Catholics, not as Pentecostals. That ain't in the Bible. That's why we're here. Let's come together as the Israelites. That's right. Y'all just saw a general. IUIC Bishop Nathaniel. Bishop, what do you think about that? Uh, well, you know, it's amazing because all of these preachers, all of these churches have Bibles in them. And when you read in the Bible, you read in Ezekiel, like I keep talking about, that there's a real judgment in there about our people not receiving this word. And the preacher, give, I, I was just want to bring two scriptures out. Give me Jeremiah 23 and also give me Ezekiel the third chapter. I'm going to show you. It's, it's out of love that we're trying to reach our people, but our people are so fearful of the enemy that they will just ignore Scripture. They will ignore what the Bible is talking about because they're still trying to uh, uh, be in accord with the social construct. And, you know, that's a heavy word. I was glad that uh, Deacon Yahshua brought that information out there and the social engineering that, that causes our people to follow lies. Okay? Okay. Uh, you know, you got it, Jeremiah 23? Yes, sir. Verse 1? Yes, sir. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. You know what it is like for a pastor to destroy and scatter the sheep of God's pastor? Because God's pastor is in the churches. Read it again. Woe be the unto... The Bible says woe means destruction. That's what woe means. Destruction to the preachers. I'm going to break it down. Go ahead. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep. How do they scatter the sheep of God? By not telling them that they're the Israelites. Have them jumping around. I don't know what the world I was looking at. All that foolishness of men dancing around. And that looked like a James Brown concert. That's what it looked like to me. Just throw the cape on them. Yeah, James Brown. I mean, grown men twirling around like they like they on fire or something. Oh, he's on fire with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> no, he no, he gonna get that Ze that Zechariah fire. Read that again. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Go ahead. Say of the Lord. Say of the Lord, because you the heritage of God, and the reason why we over here, like I was saying earlier, we was brought into captivity because we broke God's laws. So the preacher is supposed to be the one that's telling you what's going on. That's the reason why he's up there. He's supposed to be informing the people as to what's happening with the condition of the people. The reason why, this is what the pastor is supposed to be saying. Like the Bible says, what is our iniquity that we did against God to cause all this evil to happen upon us? The preachers are supposed to provide those answers. They're supposed to be telling the people because you and I, we broke the laws of God, and he cast us over here through slave ships and slavery and scattered us all around. All that's in the Bible. He's supposed to be telling these people this. But because he doesn't want to tell these people this, the people are going to die because the wages of sin is death. But the, but the charge for them dying is going to be on the preacher's head. That's the reason why it starts off by saying destruction to the preacher. Read it again. Woe be unto the pastor that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. That to scatter the Israelites into lies, into social constructs. Read. Say of the Lord. Say of the Lord. Go ahead. Therefore, thus say of the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors. Against that, the pastors, not for the pastors. Against the pastors that do what? That feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock. You have scattered my people people into lies. You have scattered my people into Christianity. You have scattered my people into false hope. You did that, preacher, with your lying mouth. The most are going to bind your tongue. Read. And driven them away. And you have driven them away from God. That's what he's saying. You have a shepherd is supposed to bring the people to the, to the most high. Right. He's supposed to gather the people up unto the most high. He's scattering them away. Into filth and foolishness. And the Bible is clearly talking about them. Go ahead. 
and have not visited them. And you have not visited them with the Bible. When the Most High talks about, like, like it says in the book of Luke, it says, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. You're supposed to visit them with their heritage. You're supposed to visit the people with the Bible. You're supposed to visit them with who they are. Go ahead. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings. I will doings. cut your head off. That's what the Lord is saying. Read it again. I will visit upon you. I will visit upon you filthy, wicked, lying preachers. The evil of your doings. The evil of your doings. You get mad at me, I don't give a damn. The most high going to get you. Right. right. Okay? I don't give a damn about your looks. Read that again. I will visit upon you the evil of your doings. I will visit upon you the evil of your doings. Go ahead. Say of the Lord. Say of the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries. Notice what he said. I will gather the remnant. In other words, the Lord is not going to allow the preacher to destroy the elect. He's going to go throughout all those. Like we're going on those blitzes. This is of God that we're doing. The people in the churches that's in those crack houses, they're hearing that the Israelites are calling. It ain't the Israelites per se. They hear God calling them. Right. They hear God calling them out of those crack houses. And they're going to respond to this. And the Lord said, I'm going to gather you out of there. Read it again. And I will gather the remnant of my flock. And I will gather the remnant of my people that are, that are going to repent, the one-third, that's being slayed by those false ideologies in them churches, telling them they can eat pork and commit fornication and all that evil. That's what's going on in there. They're not being taught God's laws. Read. Out of all countries, whether I have driven them. Out of all countries where he had driven us. All countries where we serve captivity, like we was reading earlier. The same places where we were serving captivity, the Most High said, I'm going to set up sanctuaries in all of these places for these people to come out of those witch covens, those witch covens and come to the Most High. Read. And we'll bring them again to their folds. And we'll bring them again. That's what a shepherd's supposed to do. Bring them to the fold of God. Get them out of those those lying pr pr prisons. Talking about some church. Give me uh, Ezekiel. Yes. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman. A watchman is a preacher. A watchman is, the, is a prophet. A watchman is a man that's responsible. A watchman is a shepherd. A watchman who watches over the sheep. You don't scatter them. You gather them. Read. I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Come on. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth. The Most High is talking through the prophets, talking through the watchmen. Go ahead. And give them warning from me. This is what we're telling Geno Jenkins. This is what we're telling T.D. Jakes. This is what we're telling Creflo Dollar. This is what we're telling e Evans. They got a whole lot of them out there. Bishop been tearing their ass up. Mm -hmm. and they've been trying to run from them. But oh, this message goes to them. Read that again. And give them warning from and me. And give you pastors warning from God. I know you don't care about the Bible. You wouldn't be in there lying the way you're lying if you cared. You hear us reading the Bible, you see it plain. But you just like what that definition said, a social construct, because you believe in a concept that exists, but not in, ob not in objective reality. You don't care about objective reality, reality that we can all see that we're the Israelites. You're ignoring that. You're ignoring that. Even when you're presented with facts, you're still ignoring it. Read it again. And give them warning from me. And we're giving you warning, Pastor. We're giving you warning, Mr. Preacher. Go ahead. When I say unto the wicked. When I say unto the wicked. Because you're breaking, you're about breaking God's laws. You're telling people that they can eat pork and swine. You was on there talking about the hoof, saying something about the hoof and some craziness. And the hoof, the cloven, the, 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 the hoof that split is on a clean animal as well. So that doesn't make the animal unclean. You're talking about pork. You crazy as hell. Read. Read that again. When I say unto the wicked, thou shall surely die. Thou shall surely die. Go ahead. And thou givest him not warning. And we don't warn you, you pastors. This is why we're doing what we're doing. The reason why we're outside of your church because we're trying to warn you. Right. Bishop Nathaniel actually came in the spirit of peace. He said, listen, you're my brothers. We're trying to deal with the problems in our community. And like I said on, on, on the program, the Bible Book of Our Fathers, 
uh, that was one of the programs. I've repeated it several times. The church is a big place where people gather, okay? So the people are in there, and they're being slayed by those lies. So we're trying to help, help you to deal with them. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to help you to deal with them properly. I mean, you don't want to take it serious. You want to you malign us and, 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 and marginalize us. You're going to pay for that. You're going to pay for that. Read. Nor speak is to warn the wicked. Nor the speak to warn the wicked. So this is what we're doing. We're warning you according to God. Okay? Don't look at our skin color and say that we, we're not as great as white folks. You're going to pay for that. Read. From his wicked way. From his wicked way. It's a wicked thing to tell the people that they don't have to follow the commandments of God. It's a wicked thing to not tell them that they're the Israelites. That's a wicked thing, especially because you entrusted with the Bible. You're supposed to be telling them that. And like we said before, like Bishop was trying to say, we're trying to work with the people. We're trying to give you the tools to help. We're not trying to take your congregation. We don't know what you're nervous about. We're not trying to take your congregation. We want to save your life through Christ. We want you to give to the people the medicine to save their lives. That's what our whole mission is about. Read. Nor speak is to warn the wicked. But if we don't warn you by the evil of your doings, by not teaching them, because that's God's flock. Go ahead. From his wicked way. From his wicked way. The people in there committing sin because you're telling them and it's all right. And they're going to pay for that. Go ahead. To save his life. To save his life. We're trying to save your life, Gino. We're trying to save your life, T.D. Jakes. You're our people, man. We ain't got no hatred for you. We love you. We love our people. We love our brothers and sisters in there, in those churches. But they have to know this Bible. They have to know this truth. They have to know who they are. They have to know that they are responsible for keeping the commandments of God. What does the Lord require of the nation of Israel? That we keep his commandments. That never left. That's always been the case, and that's the case now. So read. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. If you continue to teach, teach these people that they are not the Israelites, that they don't need to repent because they are the Israelites, it says what? That same man, what? The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. Go ahead. But his blood will I require at thy hand. But his, because your blood will be required at our hands because if we don't tell you, this is the judgment for us. So that's the reason why we're there. We're there because we don't want the axe laid to our heads. The Most High said, if you got this truth, you're entrusted with this Bible, go out there and wake the people up. And the majority of these people are tied up in these churches, and you're the, you're the, you're the barrier to them. You're blocking them from getting what you, what you yourself could give them if you would only listen, if you would only come and work with your brothers. The hell with the Esau, the hell with the white folks. This is about our people. And we're trying to get you to see that. But if you want to continue to ride on the wave of lies, you're going to get dealt with. And it ain't because of us. We're just mortal men for now. <laughs> we're just mortal men for now. But the judgment going to come from God. Go. Hear me well. The judgment going to come from God. Read on. Yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness. But this is, what, this is where we're at. We're warning you. But you're refusing. This is why we're doing what we're doing. Read. Nor from his wicked way. Nor that you don't want to turn from your wickedness, your sin. He you're keeping people in Christianity. You're keeping people talking about Christmas. I know you still teach that garbage. Christmas ain't in the Bible. There's no holiday. Halloween ain't no holiday in the Bible. Thanksgiving ain't no holiday in the Bible for, for the Israelites in the church to be keeping. God says, I hate those feast days. God gave us feast days in the Bible that we should keep. That's what you're supposed to be teaching the people. But you can't tell them not to deal with Christmas because if you don't, if you teach that Christmas is wicked, you're going, you're going to face repercussions. You're going to face marginaliza marginalization. You're going to face persecution. And you're going to get shut down and you're worried about that. And you're busy trying to please the enemy rather than do the work that God commanded you to do as a leader, as a preacher, as a teacher. Teach your people, brother. Read. He shall die in his iniquity. You shall die in your iniquity because we warned you. Go ahead. But thou hast delivered thy soul. But thou, meaning us, we've delivered our soul, meaning we did. We told you. We warned you. But you didn't want to listen to that? It's on you. Go ahead, Captain. You got it? Yes, sir. All praises. In case you missed us, Geno Genius, listen. We outside. 
Church bliss every Sunday. Burn down Babylon. Am I right, fellas? That's right. All right. Let's move on to the last video here. Sunday worship is unbiblical. White Jesus, unbiblical. But his name is something Israel, but he's looking to be here. He said he can prove that I don't know what I'm talking about. We got to come together as the Israelites. Unity is what the Bible says, Zephaniah 2 and 1, Ephesians 4 and 3. I know what scriptures to get to bend your shoulders down. I know what biblical submission hold to put you in to make you tap out. They will not show you what is unclean in the world. The arrogance of this brother is unbiblical. God ain't dealt with you. This is not the Holy Bible as it is written. Which is one outwardly. Because you got on purple and gold. That's right. And because you read from the Old Testament. That's right. And because you march around bragging about your cheap, dirty, filthy, ungodly black skin. Go ahead. They ain't nothing but outward Judaism talk. That's right. That don't mean nothing. Fellas, what time is it? War time. What time is it? War time. What time is it? War time. That's right, Gino Genesis. It turns out, hey, your bark <laughs> ain't worth your bite. Everything sounds good until the purple and gold show up outside. Am I right? There you go. You got it. Let's go ahead and let's break bread. All praise to the most high. Hey, all praise to the most high. Hey, give Bishop Yahweh up another hand for that fire clap. <laughs> all right, everybody got bread and wine? Anybody do not have bread and wine? Anybody? Anybody? All right. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat the bread, eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, she b shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. We pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. Bread was good, wasn't it? All praise the most high. Let's get that bread makers a hand. Give them a hand. All praise. Officer, you got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, man. Men of Israel, are you ready? Always ready. Are you ready? Always ready. Who's the king? Right. Who's the king? Right. Who's the king? Right. What color is he? Right. What color is he? Right. What color is he? Right. What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? Faith, patience, salvation. The truth. Faith, patience, salvation. The truth. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. His what? His what? His what? His what? All praises. Shalom, Israel. Most